On today's episode of Let's Talk FGO, we're going to talk about, well, Summer 3's been announced, and also there's a new opening, and there's a lot of interviews and stuff, we're done with some of that, and we'll talk about some other stuff, and some mailbag, and also the Wandering Sea. Yay. Hey, I'm one of your hosts, I am, hmm, what's a good one, I'm a, uh, I'll be Runic Omega, I'm Runes today. Your Runes. And uh, with me as always is uh, Bald Ender, Lucky. What? If you don't what understand that joke, now you have to listen to the end. God, that's right. Uh. I baited you. I might also have to edit that out. That's in the thirty. That's in the thirty-second mark. Well, this is what you get for surprising lucky. But while I stare at Omega, I would like to say I hope everyone is enjoying Fate Grand Order, aka we're only halfway there. And while we here at Studio Omega like to bring you the latest in FGO related news and memes, we will be talking about current and future events for both the JP and EM version of the game. So anyone not wanting to support us should go to uh, Hawaii. What did you call me? What was my title this week? You are... Hold on. I'm probably not saying it Germanic enough. Baldander. Baldander. Excuse me while I go on a fucking Google trip. <laughs> it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, it's a, we'll, we'll explain it later. Although I think the etymology actually is cool for Lucky. Anyway. Oh, it's a... Oh. Oh, what the fuck is this? Also, I did, you know, you might have heard me in the background. I did, I did quietly whoa when he said we're halfway there. That's a joke. Well, apparently this is my my first result of what a fucking Baldander is. Huh. Neat. I don't, I don't know what that is, but... Uh, well, we'll talk about it more later. So, let's see. Hold on. Where's the, the thing? time era. The thing is bring us... Uh, yeah. It's time to, uh, get in there. And, uh, let's, let's just go ahead now that we've, uh, we've done that stuff. I would like to remind you that this episode is brought to you by our patrons. Like Adam DeHarp, I Got Comics, Architect 10, Blacklist OG, Carlos, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Den, Legendary Boss Hunter, Rogue Robin, Shawnee P, Some Guy Named Bob, Soda Sun, 0424, Saturn 23, Video Gamer 75, and Zach Reed. And if you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it really helps us out. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Oh, yeah. All right. So after that slightly confusing <laughs> intro, uh, scratchy ear. Um, well, first off, let's go ahead and pop in and check in with everybody's favorite Kohai. That's the thing we do now, and I, we are, uh, almost three minutes in, so I can definitely say fuck. Senpai! Senpai! Oh, kudasai. Excuse me, scratch your throat. Hi, it's Wake the Fuck Up Senpai, regular server pro tips. I got two this week. First of all, hey, if you've already done Maeve's costume quest, because it's a rerun, and you might have done it already, uh, do it again, you get a free rare prism, and also still a summon ticket. So, hey, Rare Prisms! Yay! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Also, um, because I was checking for more news earlier today, I found that they've announced what August exchange items will be. It will be seashells, poison needles, and bones. Bones! Bones. I'm sure lots of people will be excited about that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, that's pretty neat. Bones. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, Alright, well, let's just power through all the intro stuff really quick. Yeah, so first off, we'll go from Records from the Throne, our regular achievement topic. Lucky will take the helm here, as he has the only thing. He hasn't done much, but thanks to this lovely, lovely influx of feathers he's been getting from Summer 2, I was able to protect Kirky's smile. I have now got Best Burb Witch. Thumbs up. Super thumbs up. Ooh, I'm very, don't know why, I feel very burpy. All I did was eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I don't have anything, and I don't have, nobody has anything, not all the world's evil either. We just, uh... Lucky, lucky, I haven't really done much, and I, most of my stuff's already been pre-spent all EXPs and stuff. I've been rounding out some stuff, like making sure that uh, uh, Robin's fully leveled for the upcoming summer, stuff like that. Oh yeah, that reminds me, did a fucking mysterious like second batch of XPs appear in the fucking shop? It might have. I thought there was only 100, and I bought them all, but then there was another like, 100 I, that I think yeah. I bought them all. I don't know. Yeah, no, because like, for some odd reason, like... Um, the month... Okay, so yeah, so people are saying, yeah, like, another fucking just 100 EXPs just showed up in the shop. Yeah, we talked about level... this last week, but then I, I'm pretty sure I... I'm pretty sure I bought all those, because I was fucking yeah. broke, and then I... There was more, so I bought them. So, eh. It's weird. Oh, one for each event. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, for both halves? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Alright, that's... Well, that's good. I think I bought them all, and I uh, still need some more mana prisms from the shop, but... Yeah, because it's... Oh, it's about confused, like, like, what? Um, but yeah, yeah, it's cool. Uh, but yeah, I haven't really done much. I've actually been playing lots of other stuff, so I haven't been super... I haven't gone as in- in- as intensely on the second part as the first part. I did get some stuff out of the store that I needed. Like, man, I didn't realize I had only like 50 
Lancer pieces, so I was like, oh, well, those are in the shop. I better buy those up in case I ever need them. Mm-hmm. So, I did that. But uh, yeah, uh, there is one thing I can talk about. Did you finish your master missions? So, uh... This is gonna be a this is a little weird one reading these. So you need to defeat fifteen doors. You need to acquire fifteen exp embers, then acquire thirty exp embers, then complete a quest with a caster in your party five times. Acquire three statues, so uh, pieces or monuments. Complete ten quests. So do the event. I mean, you can or do the events or the dailies. Yeah, it's a, a little weird. It does seem kind of like it's daily focused, but also except for the doors, maybe. No, I think there's still doors in um part two. Yeah, I think there are actually some door enemies in there somewhere. Oh, did they get to take him out for the final bit? I remember fighting doors because I remember one. There was, was an uh... option for doors, but I guess they got they're not in the final rotation. So you you could have yeah. it's but do dailies, do dailies. It's weird. Um, but okay. I remember I was internally laughing because one was named Trap Door, and I was like, hey. I think somebody else made that joke with like an Astolfo comes out of the door. Yaho, hey master. Nice. But okay. Um, so yeah, that's your master missions. Well, I think we should just, uh, I think we should roll right on into the news. Blah. Are you channeling that destroy all en- energy accent? Destroy all humans accent? No. That was definitely not that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that would be the sequel. In the sequel, you could go to London in the 60s. Ah. Uh. Anyway, it's Kelegrams. So, um, so for, uh, JP, this has kind of been a whole thing. Um, the actual release date let me actually. Can I find a decent? Yeah. So the official release date of um, JP was the 29th, or the I think it was technically the the 30th um, for them, but you know time zones. Um, no, there was an image I saw axe that we may have discussed. It wasn't just a D and D thing. I think I reiterated the joke there. Anyway, um, JP actually hit their physical anniversary date. So. Um, First of all, there was actually a uh, a uh, Famitsu tie-in. Uh, FGO 5th Anniversary was on the cover of Famitsu Magazine. And mm-hmm. there were a lot of interviews and stuff inside of it. Um, and also a lot of stats were published, which we'll talk about all that stuff a little bit later. Um, so there was a little a little bit of a, you know, kind of a, a, a mention celebration, but they're planning for their stream and stuff later. Just exactly like how we usually do it, you know. Um, the other big thing was that for the 5th Anniversary, they added a new opening to the game, which plays automatically if you boot up the JP version of the game. It's got stuff in it, it's kind of cool, but maybe you shouldn't watch it if you want spoilers. This is actually a little bit of a discussion uh, people have been having. It's Contextually, it's maybe not spoilery, however, um, at least for us, for our community, it has definitely caused a lot of spoilery discussions. Mm. Um, and that has definitely been a thing we've been doing on the Discord in the past couple of days. The mods have been a little active, and I've been, been in there too, kind of telling people to like Roll it back in, you know, keep it to our designated spoiler areas, calm down a little bit. It's 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 interesting and it sparked a lot of discussion, but it's for now it's just discussion, right? Mm-hmm. Like other other than stuff that is uh, showcasing events that have already happened, everything is just speculation. So it's just like, yeah. okay, calm down guys, relax a little bit. A lot of forward looking stuff. Contains a calamity that is your memories. Uh still some interesting stuff in there. I like the look of it. Um mm-hmm. Uh, one thing you definitely cannot avoid, it is not possible, but also I'm pretty sure it's not a spoiler, is that they do show off a new Mystic Code design that people oh, like, yeah. because they're arting it a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm on Twitter right now, I think I've seen it three times already. Y- yeah, so there there are little bits that you um, won't be able to avoid, but I think mostly people have known to like maybe keep some of the stuff in there. And we've talked about this before, once a servant becomes playable, it's maybe not a, not a design. Um... Be careful about that, though. That character hasn't appeared. That a character hasn't appeared in North America yet. That's what I'm talking about, right? Like, just it as cool it is, it is and all that. There's like, there's a lot of side spoilers, and some people even even kind of complain to me that they're getting splash damage on the spoilers. Um, so it it's cool, but it's definitely a little awkward, especially since it, like if you literally boot up. Uh, <laughs> that's a great screen cap. Um. If you boot up F- FGOJP, it, like, pops immediately. Um, so that I'm a little, like, side-eye on, but I guess they know their own audience or whatever. Um, so they publish a lot of stats, uh, which we can casually mention. So let's see. Um, the general tone of the stats was stuff like who got the most grails, who's at the most 110, the most USO uses, stuff like that. 
Um, and actually, I can pull out some of the stuff that was translated. Like, um, uh, Jalter is the most grailed with Gil II. Um, both Herc and Lancelot are pretty popular in grails. Uh, oh, gosh. Actually, this seems a little small. Um, Lucky, would you like to know how many um, USOs slash blank St. Greffs have ever been obtained ever? Oh, yeah, let me hear it. Uh, so in JP, only 500,000... 574,217 blank St. Graphs have been obtained. Well, I said Which, they're... when you think about the fact that we're, what is it, 20 million downloads? 21 mm-hmm. million? That's not that that much. Yeah, 20 mil is, I think, the, the one we just passed. <laughs> um, so, that's interesting. Um, now, the interesting thing that has been they've been used for is, um, the top five that they've been used for is Okita Alter, Skok Scotty, Summer VB, Areshigal, and Murasaki Shikubu. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm going to assume that was probably kind of a reflex of like, oh shit, a right to design. Fuck. Give. Um, but there's a lot of stats for like Max Bond. Uh, believe it or not, Jolter is big. All the big support casters are, are huge in there. Arash has a lot of bonds. Um, they talk about which chapters have the most text, um, with Lost Belt 5 Olympus, the second part being the most. That alone, that half of the chapter has more text than Babylonia. Um, Lost Belt 5 is number one and number three between the two of them, by the way. It's rough. Um, though, interestingly enough, number four is actually Lost Belt 2 in terms of text. Interesting. Um, with Lost Belt 1 being uh, Lost Belt one being number five, that means both Lost Belt 4 and Lost Belt 3 are way below that. And in fact, Lost Belt 3 has less text than not only Camelot, but also Shimosa and Salem. Um, so it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see later this year. That makes it sound like it's a little bit short. Um, uh, I feel a slight amount of uh, vindication, by the way, because on the on the fan survey of the Japanese fans about what chapters they like, um, Shimosa is in the top ten, and it's actually number six. Oh, lovely. Um, with um, Lost Belt five being rated as number two under Babylonia right now, Lost Belt five Atlantis. I'm excited to get there one day. Also, this is another thing that I found really interesting. Um, people voted on their favorite events. Number two is our upcoming summer event, Summer Servant Festival. Really? And number three is um, Ian Spring Breeze, the White Day event from this year, the Odysseus event. So I'm like, wow, interesting. Okay. That's a little bit of expectation. And they've got lots of other little stuff. Um, what servants people want alternate costumes for? How do they get into fate? That kind of stuff. Favorite Noble Phantasm animations. Abigail is number one, by the way. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Though Vanilla Saber uh, is, is number four. She's on the list. Servants who have Bond Grails. Um, I also find vindication. Uh, apparently, the Japanese fans have a lot of uh, have a lot of good taste. There is a poll of what Type Moon characters they want to be in FGO. Number one is Arcuid from Type uh, from Tsukihime, but uh, number two, Charlemagne. Yeah. Number three, Aozaki Toko. Yeah. Um, with uh, Emi Ashiro actually being number four, but they got a lot in there. But by the way, they're counting regular Emi Ashiro and Muramasa separately. Apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, though um, uh, Mato Shinji is number nine. That surprises me a little. And uh, Karen is number 10. Uh, so Bazette surprised. is number 6. Uh, Aozaki Oko is number 5. And Prototype Gill is number 7. A lot of people want Proto Gill. Probably that data mining. So that's kind of the stats they published. A lot of it's really interesting and informative. And I, we've talked about this before. Love all that back-end shit they do. It's really mm-hmm. interesting. Um, there have also been a couple of interviews posted. So um, <laughs> people have talked with them. Um... What's up? What did you, you find so funny? Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm just gonna post it. Go for it. Hold on, I gotta scroll back down and say to scroll up. <laughs> crab. <laughs> crab servant. I love it. The holy crab war. <laughs> Did you retweet this? I'm about to. Okay, good, because I'll retweet it when you retweet it. Um, so, uh, interviews with, um, uh, Nissan, Kano Yoshiki. Um, they talked a lot about different stuff. Like, for instance, they split Lost Belt 5 because there was so much text in it. So much text. Um, and in general, they talk about um, just some general stuff, right? Like, um, mm-hmm. uh, like so, um, for instance, they talk about Master Level. Um, so, um, apparently, they decide to raise the Master Level cap when most players have reached it. Oh. Um, and for us, that'll be, like, probably backported, the timeline. Um, but uh, apparently, they went to 150... You know, and, and a lot of people haven't hit that cap, so they're still holding back further updates. They do a lot of practice. Um, they talk about how they want to do main interludes. They want to do it so that the game isn't constantly doing reruns, right? Yeah. Because they want to kind of balance out for players who haven't had a chance to play it with players who have possibly played an event twice already, you know, and kind of balance it out. 
Oh yeah, no. The thing that threw me wild is the how many people have logged in every day. Oh yeah, that stat I mentioned too. That's bananas. Um, yeah. There's what is it? Um, twenty one hundred people ish. Yeah. Yeah, I think I wrote that down in my notes. That apparently, um, it's a little over that, but approximately two thousand one hundred people have logged into FG. Haven't missed a login day in five years. Um, now because F. Um, and people made some very sassy pants dumb jokes about oh well nobody in NA will do that no. Because JP has had 24-hour maintenance before, too. Um, so presumably they are counting that as the days minus any times they've missed those, and they've, like, rewarded the streak stuff. So there are people who haven't missed a day in five years. It's wild. Crazy. Um, I think the big thing is that I learned from this interview is if you felt like FGO was stalling for the anniversary and for summer, um, it's true. They technically were. Um, because of the COVID stuff, they actually said this. Their last big push was to get Chapter 5 Part 2 out, um, and then they wanted to do the Requiem collab for Golden Week. That had to get delayed a little bit because of working, and then they were like, they settled down and were like, okay, what are our priorities? Our priorities are 5th Anniversary and um, Summer. 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 Yes. So um, they did actually buckle down and made sure those were all prepped and complete, and that's why there have been a lot of reruns and a lot of softballing with, like, um, main interludes, interlude campaigns, that kind of stuff. They have actually tried to, because they had to refocus their workforce, double down and, like, get those right. But those are in order. And um, the Heaven's Field tie-in stuff uh, is also in order. That's all been done for ages. They just need to mm-hmm. wait for the movie to actually come out. So hopefully this this August. Yep, because remember, they like to stuff. fire things off when for real-life events. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Uh, now that they've explicitly said that, I feel kind of better about it, because I was a little like, mm, you guys shouldn't do it. But the way they phrased it is like, no, we're trying to make sure this was the content that was big and we want to do it. Um, a general theme I've gotten from a lot of these interviews is that, um, honestly, everybody's a little disappointed because they had to cancel the big in-person event. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, it was fucking Tokyo Dome, man. Oh, yeah, no. So, like, literally in this interview, Kano Yoshiki is like, don't worry, for Anniversary 6, we're going we're gonna to do, even, we've been talking about Type Moon, we're going to be even bigger and better. Which is saying something. So, like, yeah, yeah. Um, they're they 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 seem really disappointed. They can't do the live event and all that stuff yet. So they're gonna try and uh, bring it next year. Also, yes, next year there will be an anniversary six. Soft confirm. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that was a big one with content. Um, they talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, like collabs are kind of suggested by Type Moon, and they pick all the writers. Um, they talked about the free SSR. Um. It's really interesting to hear this, because you might think, oh, you have to do the, all this hoops for the free because they're greedy, but the way that, like, Yoshiki talks about it is that, like, no, if we just give you a free servant, you won't bond with that servant. You won't appreciate that character if you just get him for free. So we wanted to make sure there was a little bit of a, there was a little bit of an action in there, like you had to actually literally build their bond levels to keep them, right? So... I guess that's fair, but also I'm kind of... Mm. Well, they say summoning the servant is about the bond you have with the servant, so forcing to create a bond would go against the principle of the summoning. I guess that's um, true. So it's kind of like, they kind of, they discuss that stuff when talking about giveaways and kind of how to balance it out, so um, it seems pretty popular, um, and hey, uh, guess what the top three were? Uh, waiver... Because they were permanents. You couldn't pick, like, Merlin or Scotty or anything. Yeah, so it was probably Waiver... Waiver number one. Uh, you got it. It's on the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ganesha? No, actually. Hmm. Hmm. We're playing. We're we're playing the feud right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm trying to think here. Who else is a permanent that everyone fucking wants? Who's another permanent support unit? Maybe. Uh, I I've I've, I've blanked on my list. Um, I don't know. Tell me. Oh, Tama. Okay. Wait, Tama. Yeah, yeah. Ding. Tama is number three. Um, you're probably not gonna guess the second. It's John. Oh, Vanilla John really? is number two. Uh-huh. Um, also, if you're curious, uh, Nissan himself picked Tama. I give Nissan a high five from over here. Yay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Somewhere in his way, well, actually, no, he's probably asleep. Just in his dreams, he just high, he just high fived a black American. He has no idea yeah. why. So um, they have talked about. It. There's a lot of stuff that they they're working on. Lots of little development stuff, and they've apparently kind of streamlined um, their their work process. So now that they don't have so many delays, um, and they are planning on making the literally the phrase is they're planning on making FGO more entertaining. Um, now that they've got kind of a new workflow system and they've updated the engine, they've got better plans to do more stuff. Um, and the fifth, they say the fifth anniversary is a showcase time to show off the things they couldn't do before. Ooh. Um, and also they have announced that, um, this was a soft announce, but um, uh, Nissan said that um, 
they're actually going to release the strengthening quests for the anniversary before the stream as a kind of a countdown build up. So they're going to get that oh. started to lead oh, into lovely. it. So that's cool. Uh, when's the stream again? Is it the tenth? The eighth? Yes, the tenth. Tenth. Got it. So yeah. So they're they're they are doing a lot of bigger and better planning. Um, the Nasu Takauchi interview was much more story based. Um, they were talking about story and stuff. You know, um, big releases. The big thing you're probably hearing about this is that Nasu said something to the point of something to the effect of part two is only halfway done. Yep. Um, I want to, I want to, now that that's untrue, he did say that, but I want to contextualize that. That is counting the fact that like, um, they're, they explicitly are talking about other story events that tie in that are not necessarily Lost Belt chapters. Um, they explicitly said that OQ was kind of a 3.5 chapter. It was actually a story chapter that was kind of time limited event that was meant to bridge the gap between Lost Belt's three and four thematically without necessarily being required to do either, you know? I mean, it was like, it's just like, it's just like CCC. Well, yeah, you did. I do believe you did actually have to complete Lost Belt 3 to do OQ, but whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you don't need yeah. to complete OQ to move on to Lost Belt 4. Um, so similarly, if you're wondering about story content this year, um, Nasu and Takuchi's interview did say they're planning another chapter, a 4.5, kind of bridging the gap between 4 and 5 um, thematically <clears throat> um, in 2020, later this year. So expect more on that um, here. Will we be getting Lost Belt 6 this year? I don't know. Um, probably not. Probably not. Maybe not. Maybe in winter again. We don't know. We just don't know. Um, the main story is their priority, but depending on how text-heavy this is, there's a lot of writing going on. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. the We probably should expect at least two more years of FGO uh, as it is. Um, Nasu has said that he does have a definitive end in mind for all the characters' stories. Like, he thinks that they should end. The, he phrased this as, like, after Fate's Day Night, Emi, Emi Ashiro's story is done. Though, I mean, I, I know some people pick some bones with Nasu about the way he phrases that with writing style. Um, but the way he sees it is that that character's story is concluded. Their life goes on and maybe stuff happens with them, but they're, the, the definitive part of their story is over. So that's how it would be with FGO. FGO characters won't necessarily go away, but he's planning on wrapping up their storytelling with part two. Um, what that actually means, we don't know yet, because this makes a shitload of money, and it is a games as a service kind of thing, and um, there is some interesting stuff going on, and they have a lot of longevity. Like, Takauchi seems much more almost business savvy, which makes sense, because he was the one who suggested to Nasu to make it an AeroJ in the first place, right? The original yeah. Fate Stay Night. Um, keep it that way. Um, that he's like, he understands that, like, people are going to want this to keep going and stuff. That said, um... Nasu also apparently pays attention to a lot of what the fan base is saying and how they feel about stuff. And he even mm -hmm. dropped a comment that he was like, but he understands that there are people who are in like, who started FGO in like middle school who have gone through high school and stuff. FGO is they're basically their whole life as it is when you're a kid. And mm -hmm. he kind of, he said at the end of the interview, like he wants to live up to their expectations too. So it's like, um, there definitely seems like there's some understanding that as, as a concept, FGO as a game might not necessarily go away when part two ends, but he is planning a definitive like story. I've heard some people phrase that as, like, we're definitely, if there's a part three, we're going to move to new characters, for sure. Uh, that isn't explicitly stated. We don't know exactly what a part three is going to look like, just that probably there will be some sort of part three continuing stories, whatever. Um, but that Nasu will probably move away from directly writing it and kind of conclude the story of, of part two definitively. Um, and they did talk about how while it's a... a, um, a Lost Belt 5 is kind of a big climax thematically for a lot of stuff. Obviously, it took two parts. It was a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, they did mention the whole halfway, and there's still more to come. So it'll be really interesting. And I don't know. I guess what, like, part, like, uh, part 5 was like a paradigm shift, maybe? Yeah. Um, the way they phrased it is it's, it's quote-unquote, the end of kind of the Cryptor's arc. Oh. Like, um, because the main antagonist well, is, is Wodaime, Wodaime, right? So yeah. we conflict with the big Cryptor guy. And now yeah, we have to deal I... with kind of the fallout from that and the remaining couple of guys who are left, right? So, not oh, yeah, to spoil you anything from see it, are but... Like, the guys you see are like, these guys are assholes. I believe the way I can say, and I can say this without spoiling, the way that Nasu phrased it was that we could build an understanding with Wodaime, he's a big threat, but we can actually kind of see his motivation. Not that the remaining two cryptors aren't dangerous and aren't intelligent, but their motivations and mentalities are more alien. They're more unusual and strange, which kind of makes sense. They're both the yeah. guys who in, like, the prologue are like, and murder is super cool. Uh, <laughs> One being... through five, all the cryptos are like, we can get along. We can be buddies, even if I, after I kick your ass. 
yeah, so it's there. There's definitely some thematic and tonal shifts. It sounds like going on, and we'll mm-hmm. be sure to talk about that more when that actually happens for us in two years. Uh, well, actually, a little under because the first Lost Belt five would be a uh, uh, December of. Let me check. Yeah, it's gonna be December of twenty twenty one because twenty one will be Lost Belt four and the first part of five. Got some time. Um, mm-hmm. so it's it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, there's probably some other tidbits in there, but we've already been talking for like thirty minutes on this. I don't know. Um. In general, I would once again tell everybody, don't worry. We joke about Nasu, you know, evaporating the servers or whatever, turning into a pile of salt. That's probably not going to happen. It's just there will be a definitive conclusion for the story arcs of the characters involved, and we may or may not get some paradigm shifts. But the game is still going to evolve and work forward, and everybody is dedicated to continuing the game as a story and as a game. Mm. It's cool. Thumbs up. Um, I'm very excited to see what comes out of Anniversary now. Will it be more bronzes? Will it be more, uh, will it be more, you know, stuff? Who will be the, who will be the, the Anniversary Servant? Who knows? What will the, what will the, what will the bag be? What will all the quality of life be if they're talking about new mechanics? Will we actually finally actually, improve daily quests? Actually, since they released a new opening, they probably haven't done a new trailer like they did before. Damn it! Maybe not? I don't know. The trailer's, the OP is pretty, it's not super long. But it does involve a lot of new animation, so maybe. Yeah. So we're gonna, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know if they'll do that though. I bet it's gonna be Nemo for the anniversary server right now. Hmm. Oh no, I was just using the it captain. The yeah. The captain. That's something people have been a little casual about. It's the captain. Uh, we're talking yeah. about a character who's not introduced yet. My I bad. It's, it's not. No, I don't think anybody heard you really. It's not a huge deal anyway. It's just that like we should we should try and uh kind of like um. We should, we should, like we said, play it a little tighter the vest because we don't know. At least until the Lost Book comes out. I'm, I don't know if people will get it right away. I just need to see the context for stuff. Anyway, um, did we already do that? No, we didn't do that yet. Hey, um, they announced a Summer Servant Festival. It's coming. Lucky was off by one day in his prediction. It makes him mad. 8 3 to 8 22. Yeah, Lucky said that it would drop the 4th because usually that's a fun time they like to do their maintenance on. We like, they like to do their maintenance on Tuesdays. So I was like, yeah. Give no, us the it's weekend. Gonna be Sunday night into Monday, it looks like. Yep. Uh, but still, that's cool. Hopefully, mm-hmm. uh, this hurricane will have moved by by then, and I can spend all 360 of my St. Courts. Ah. Uh, luckily, it's going to go on until the 22nd, so. It's a long time. Yeah, it's the big it's the big boy event. Um, I did release the first part, Wanted. It's got all three of the Summer Servants in it, because they're limited. Um, so, uh, you can check that out if you want to know more about Summer Jean, Summer Ushi, and Summer... Uh, Ibaraki. Uh, view wise, it's doing okay. It's not super explosive, but it's also doing pretty good. Um, and it's it's kind of experimental. It's pretty long. It deals with three servants. I throw out most of the lore and history stuff I talk about because they're summers. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. And um, there will be a second part of this. Some people actually talked to me about like maybe wanting to kind of rephrase stuff to be a little more catchy on search engines. Um, which I will say I've thought about that. I think about search engine optimization. Um. Somebody suggested, like, I should say literally all the things the video is in the title, though, and that's that's not necessarily good either. People don't necessarily click on videos that have, like, super wordy, expansive titles. You can put some of that stuff in, like, tags and description. It's okay. Um, but we could... I could maybe rephrase more. Well, um, I honestly... I don't, I don't think that and either of these two summer ones are going to be super optimized, because just they talk about lots of different stuff, and they're kind of unusual. Um... We'll keep that in mind. I have actually, since people have mentioned it a couple of times, I've I've thought about this and I am actually planning on... I'll figure out how exactly it works with my graphic. I'm planning on expanding my graphic to cover mats, too. I'll just I'll just add it there as a graphical aid. Because um, people have been talking about it. Again, probably not for the next summer, but once we go back into more normal stuff, we'll have a few... a few. I was going to say weeks. No, it'll probably be a few months, not barring, like, other video concepts coming up. Because, um, C I is not until Halloween. Uh, there should be the Fate Zero rerun, though, and I've gotten requests to redo Iskandar's Wanted with kind of our formatting, so I might, I'll, uh, and he's gotten some buffs, too, in the couple of years since we did that first Wanted, so, um, look forward to maybe a retouch on that. Okay. So, um, I think that's all the news. I think so, too. Hold on. So, hmm? I'm gonna go grab a bottle of water. Alright. Lucky can vamp. I will vamp. Uh, let's see here. Do we actually have a space in here for... No, we don't actually have a space in here for Summer 2 Thoughts. 
But I guess I'll mention to Omega when he gets back with his hydration situation. I know he talked a little bit about it earlier. Lucky for his part has been weird. He's actually like he's actually instead of working on the thumbnail like he should be, he's staring at his game, going like, "I should do these fucking challenge quests for these fucking foes because I need my t my Tama to get swole with HP." Swole. So cat. I'm, I'm back by the way. So he's Oof. back, but so we didn't. We I see you didn't put a space for like summer to rerun thoughts. Do you actually have any other? Thoughts on Summer yeah, Not really. I mean, I did it. It's going. Uh, I think we've got some questions in the mailbag that may be related to it. Maybe. Yeah, there there was one that um I saw. Uh, so my overall winner was Raiko, which was kind of hilarious. Um, it turns out that Raiko did just want to show off her fucking swimsuit and just wanted Master all to herself, as Raiko do. Um, what else? Like, I, I skipped, like, honestly, like, I skipped most of the, um, story, but, like, when we got to the part with Golgana, I read it all because I just wanted to see everyone just trash-talking to Ishtar constantly, because I'm like, yeah, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna let this girl get bullied a little bit, I'm like, keck. Yeah, I probably but, could the story real fast, just doing this fight yeah, stuff. So, um, my overall team winner was Nero, mm. still. I'm pretty sure that was a lot of people, um, because... I think, like, officially, like, I think Nero, near um, Team uh, Tyrannical Shooting Star won, like, every race except, like, one or two. Because I know, I know, I know Desert Beauty won one. Right. That was a whole and thing. And I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure, I guess that Raiko, uh, Raiko and, um, Team uh, Shadow Prefects got, like, maybe one or two? Maybe? Maybe. I, maybe. I can't remember. I don't know. There's someone, a graph someone, post, someone, someone, someone was, someone was a mad lad and posted all the stats, but. Yeah, nah. we don't have it handy, though. Yeah, we don't have it handy. But, again, I hope everyone had fun. We still got uh, about 24 hours, uh, a little bit more than 24 hours left in the event. So, clean up those shops, get your CQs done. Uh, as I said, oh, you got a weekend You got a weekend to to take those deep preps, and then you're diving right back in. Yeah, I should probably so, work on the shop a little bit more. Yeah. I, like, I, the only thing I would say is that I haven't, and I mentioned earlier, I haven't gone as whole hog on the, the part two shop as I did the part one. Just because the other stuff came up. Uh -huh. uh, oh, excuse me. So... With that, though, we are going to transition into let's talk at Geo mailbag. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This week we have a full mailbag as usual. Looks like we got forty entries. Uh, yeah. Since we since we do seem to have a back half, we will um put in a timer. One hour. One hour timer. All right. So everybody, the video will be at least two hours long because I have to read later. Yes. 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 Because we're already at thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. So, um, before I actually start the time, I will talk. Lucky was uh, a lad who was like, all right, I'm rewriting these rules. I'm making them shorter and more to the point. And it looks like uh, it kind of worked. It's like, even though we got more than we usual, it doesn't look like any of them are, for one, fucking essays. I think I literally wrote that in yes. the... Yes, no essays, no giant questions. <laughs> if you, Oh, yes, if you want to tell us your cool servant ideas, please join our Discord. Um, so, Lucky hits Stato on it, and we're going to begin. And we're going to start with that one guy who exists, hoping that anger at the gotcha counts as a catalyst for an adventure. Hey, Lucky and Omega, hope you're doing well. I have a simple question. Does throw more berserkers at the problem count as a strategy? Asking for a friend. Wish you and everyone watching this good luck on your rolls. Um, quick answer, yes. As I said, Berserkers with their um, all um, basically uh, slightly increased damage against everyone usually means that if you can hit hard and fast, you can bully most things down pretty quick. The only problem is, as I said, that in terms of long-term battles where you might have things such as break bars or just high M not high MP, but high, M high HP, excuse me, servants, Berserkers are going to probably um, get splat pretty quick. Berserkers that you'd probably really like to use would probably be Berserker Lancelot for quick goodness. Nightingale for support memes. Herc is a great single target. Um, Buster, with who's really hard to kill. Number four in Grail targets, by the way. Mm hmm Um, as said, Tomic Cat um is kind of in is in between is in kind of in between with making good crit start um, generation on her MP, but has a decent amount of survivability. Uh let's see here. Ibaraki's uh pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Vlad is good for art comps, although his damage output might be a little bit less than you might expect. 
Honestly, hmm? all the other than maybe some of the three star and lower berserkers who get a little samey. Um, hmm. I think the game understands that, like Lucky mentioned, most berserkers because they are high, high damage given but high high damage taken. Mm-hmm. They all have a little bit of a of an interesting niche that does different yeah. stuff, right? Like they all do, they all have a lot of of strategies internally that they use. Mm-hmm. If you're going for more budget options, Lubu is a great pick. I've heard a lot of people say good things about uh, Lubu. Kyuhime, while she's a good starter for AOE damage, you'll find her quickly outpaced by other options that you can get. Mm. Uh, though again, oh. I believe Kyo is a very popular target for. Uh, Grailing, and uh, mm-hmm. I think she was on the list of servants with Max Bond, like number 10 Kyuhime. Oh, well, no, yeah, so, like, I have a Max Bond Kyuhime. Uh, I use her in my um, farming uh, farming team a lot. As like I said, like, Kyo's great in a farming team, but I would not necessarily bring her to, like, uh, to uh, story content. Uh, as I said, unfortunately, I have not played. Like, Asterios um, is not really used for damage. He is actually a very defensive berserker. Asterios has a lot of very interesting. Like, talk about bringing, not bringing Kyo to story content. Asterios is the guy you bring because he has very weird strats he can do. Yeah, yes. You bring an Asterios and a George, and you just say, like, like no damage. Just no. Unfortunately, I, like I was to say, I haven't played with Caligula, um, Eric, um, I can't think of his fucking name. That's how little I use him. Viking Man. Eric. Eric Bloodaxe. There it is. Um, so I can't come on them, but... I said, just look at your kits and just uh, just realize that they're probably gonna go splat if you have to use them too long. But we're gonna go into this next one. Thank you, that one guy who exists, hoping that Andrew at the Gotcha counts as a catalyst for an adventure. Oof, excuse me. This one comes from No, I'm not a Sundari, and definitely not the Isekai FBI. And they say, I definitely did not send this mail back because I enjoy your show or anything. It's not like I like your show or anything, Baka. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Is there any servant or upgrades or augment in the future for your servants like Command Code? I personally like the addition of Command Codes because you can further upgrade your fur- servants further, even further. So is there any future things like that in JP that will add later on in the server? Not like I want to know anything. Urasat! Baka! Um... Uh, well... Uh, I, I felt I could do better. Um... I can't... Uh, I, I can't there really is actually this a, is a new. I can't really know what... There is actually a thing. Oh, well, you go first. Um, I believe it will be in Anniversary 4, but I'm not sure. But in the future, there is a faux pause thing, um, which you... It's kind of like command codes, but it's for it's per the... I believe it's per the card anyway. But you... It's like foes to increase your attack, but you put them on specific command cards. So you can give your command oh. cards a little bit extra attack um by feeding them faux paws. I don't know how common they are with the the paw prints. I don't really know the economy, but they exist. So there are there are even f- you can go even further beyond in making your bestest specialist servants even more bestest and specialists. One day I will achieve a Tabamo perfect. Oh, uh, I said like actual like servant upgrade things. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, it comes with a weekly ticket. That's lovely. That's right. It is. Um uh, no, I just said, like, I don't think they've actually come out with, like, that many, like, direct um, damage outputs um, methods. Like I said, we just got command codes this year. Next year is the faux uh, paw print. And who knows the year after that? Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I am super excited for whenever the heck they add the five-star CEs to, not the five-star CEs, the five-star emblems to the game. Yeah. That'd be a good time. I think that's later this year with with a million downloads event. Mm-hmm. Is they they upgrade the FP gotcha with more EXPs, more EXPs, always good. Okay. And yeah, so add five stars. Uh, so thank you. No, I'm not a Sundari, and definitely not the Isekai FBI. For a question, we will move on to President. I didn't get Castanero, so I'm going home. They ask question: What casual outfit, alternate costume that has appeared in a different uh, Fate work, i.e. Uh, Saber's royal brand outfit um, from Zero, or Liz's sweater from Excella. Would you like to see as a Spiritron dress in FB and FGO? Uh, do you got like a quick hands? I feel like we've sure we 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 answered this before, but um, yeah, I would also totally take uh, suit Saber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a solid one. Uh, Lucky his answer is from Excella Link, and it'd be Tomacop. <laughs> Tomacop's a good one, yeah. 
Actually, that's a good question. Uh, Vanilla Nero and Tomo don't have any costume dresses, do they? No, wait, Nero, Nero does. The Nero, gym. Well, Nero has a fucking uh, g- has a fucking school athletic. <laughs> yeah, the gym outfit for Nero Fez that actually works. Um, okay, uh, but Tomo doesn't. That's kind of a shame. Yeah. She's kind of a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and also while we're at it, I don't know. I don't know. Altera is kind of a big deal, and they've just re-released um, Extella and Link for uh, for iOS. So I don't. <laughs> Sweet Devil or Nurse outfit. Move on. Oof. Oof. Uh, so, President, I didn't cast Nero again, cast Nero, so I'm going home. Thank you. Um, this next one comes from a simple man with a simple wish. Who asks, are there any servants whose popularity or lack thereof surprises you? See, I like this question, but at the same time, I'm just like, shit, this requires thinking. Uh... Well, I, mm, I don't even know if they're that popular because memes. Um, memes. We talked about this, the, the iron, ironical liking versus liking something unironically and them being just the same thing. Um. I'm always surprised that at least people joke about Caster Gills so much, even though usually if you ever talk about him as a unit, they're like, oh no, he's awful. He's terrible. And also he's a terrible person. He murders okay. children. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I want to say Blackbeard, but I think Blackbeard's kind of popular in his own right. He is, and I think he's more popular in Japan. They find him yeah. more, they find him more entertaining. Over here, people are just like, no, but that's creepy. It's weird. Columbus is surprisingly popular as well. I suppose that's true. People, I don't know if he's truly popular. People are weird about him. Man, Whenever I make a joke weird. about nobody owning a Columbus because he's a story like three star on a Gartha of all things, um, people are like, "But I have a Columbus," and I'm like, "Well, good for you." Like here's like here's the thing. Like popular, like popularity is in the is in the eye of the holder. It's just like. Like, because I know, like, there's a lot of people who love BB, but there's also a lot of people who, like, don't like BB, and I'm just like... Well, yeah, and BB's got one of those personality types that she's... She's a very specific sort of heroine. Yeah. Effectively, right? Um, so Same with, like, the other alter egos. Like, I I tolerate Melt, but I like Passion Lip as a style of character a lot better, but there are some people who are like, I will die for... Please step on me, melt son. And I'm just like, don't do that. <laughs> don't actually do that. That would be bad. You have swords for legs. That. I'm a... I'm a... Being stabbed is not my kink. <laughs> but um, it's just like uh, I'm trying to think of maybe like more vanilla servants. Like I'm trying but... to think about whom whomst whomst are characters that maybe weren't super popular. Like because there are characters I'm not surprised by their popularity. Like everybody likes uh, upcoming uh, William Tell because he's a he's like a dad archer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, no, I understand this completely. He's super cool. Same with Asclepius. I'm like, yeah, no, Snake Doctor. Um. Oh, actually, I like, I, actually, I, actually, I, I think I knew someone whose who's, who's popularity kind of surprised me. I don't think it's unwarranted, but fucking um, Emperor Mothman. Ooh, yeah, like, that's a good one. Yeah, like, like nothing against people who like him. Like again, I don't haven't actually seen him, but when he came out, he just fucking exploded. And I was just all like, "Why is everyone talking about this moth?" Yeah, that's but, true. Like Whiskock Scotty, when it was Skahawk, but also she had a lot of meta defining stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so that kind of made sense. She was a big hyped servant. That doesn't surprise anybody. Yeah. Ivan was kind of like I know some people do like him, but he seems compared to the other Lost Belt Kings, he seems a little softballed. Yeah, he people warmed up to him, um, but like he didn't have an explosive release. Actually, Omega, yeah. can you pause the recording real quick, please? Yep. Okay. Uh, do you remember what you were gonna say before we paused about popular stuff? Well, like you said, um, Ivan kind of got a slow roll up. Like he didn't have an explosive one. He didn't really die out. It's like he. Everyone's all like, like him, big HP writer, her, her, her. And well, okay, when his skills were data mined, people were like, "Oh my god, he's the brokenest thing." <laughs> These are skills. Is this legal? And then he came out, and nobody cared. Yeah. And then, and then Cox Cody come out, and they're like, "Is this legal?" And then Mothman came out, and we're like, "Is this allowed?" <laughs> and like, it just keeps going every time. Yeah. You're like, "Is this allowed? Is this okay?" Yeah, but so. I I guess that's it. That's it. I mean, so for other than other than Ivan, I think characters who I think who have kind of uh, seemingly faded in popularity. Um, I'm kind of surprised. Um, Bradamante, for instance, because she's a permanent lancer. Um, who kind of like there was a little bit of pop, but there was also a lot of people just confused by her uh, action shot MP, and then she just kind of faded away. Yeah. Um. Maybe no re maybe no rerun is kind of a no specific rate up is harder, but it's like she's permanent though. Like I feel it. it's interesting that people aren't super excited about. It. Actually, Tyranno King brought up another good one. Consort Yang fucking exploded. 
Like, well, I think somebody sure did a literal s- comparison between, like, Europa and then Consort Yang in terms of, like, fan art, and it was just whew, crazy pants. But she got those thighs. Yeah. So it she was, it was interesting, to, interesting to see, yeah, the kind of different stuff go on. And she's dangerous. Oh, dangerous. It's like, you know, like, people like uh, fucking um, Lady Murasaki exploded in popularity, but that surprised fucking nobody. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, you see some characters, and like, of course they're going to be fucking popular. Mm-hmm. And others are just like, hmm. Yeah, uh, but let's probably not linger on this too much, because we got a lot yeah, of questions left. We do got, we got more. We got, let's get more. So, thank you, Simple Man with Simple Wish. We will move on to Three Star Instigator, who says, Hello there, Lucky Omega. Always fun to listen to your shows. I hope your summer three rolls go well, and I hope wish you plenty of big sis and or Pele spooks. Slightly aggressive thumbs up. Well, I'm going to give you a slightly aggressive double thumbs up back. Thank you, and I hope your goes well. Right goes well as well. Go right as well. well I also as give well. thumbs up, but you can't see. Yeah. So thank you, three star investigator. We move on to that one dude who tried to get Yagyu with eighty percent cords, only to walk away with MP two comma. I'm done with this question already. Get out of here. I'm done. Moving on. <laughs> no, no, it comes right at the end, Lucky. Okay, okay. Walks away with MP two comma, but still can't get a dive to blue drop. I've gotten two Dive to Blue Drops, by the way, and I already had an MLB copy, internet. Uh, let's see Shit's here. Shit's weird. So, uh, question is, hey, Lucky Omega, love the content. Let's Talk FGO is becoming a weekly tradition for me. Lol. Uh, now for my question. Which servants that you have do you find yourself really liking as character, but not liking their game playing style or skills? Sorry, this is a repeat question. Have a good day, and good luck on Summer 3. Good luck to you, too. But um, Lucky has a quick answer for this. Uh, Boudica. I love Boudica. As a character, a I one, find... Yeah. Yeah, but as we said, her kit's not the best. She gets some buffs, but yeah, at the it's weird. She's like a budget mash, but mash is already budget, so. Yeah. I, I suppose if you need that mash-like feel in story chapters, because um you are now mandated to Lost Belt mash. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's still a little... I would agree with that one. Also, no, we haven't gotten this question before. Usually people like to ask us about stuff we don't like, or just straight up ask us about gameplay stuff. Mm-hmm. I guess that's, this is definitely a good question, but I yeah, Boudica for me. Uh, I think we should also add Jerome out of that list. We liked him a lot in America, both of us, but uh, yeah. his oh, kit also, is also, just also, a mess. Oh, also Geronimo. Oh my god, Geronimo. Yeah. Kids Geronimo works. is a bro. He's super bro. I adore him. But every time I look at a skill kit, I'm just like, what? That doesn't count, Tyranno King. That's in the future. Yeah. Mew doesn't exist yet. Because um, the question was that we have... And obviously mm-hmm. we have Geronimo, we have Boudica, three stars. I'm trying to think, are there any others I really... Uh, nobody jumps out. Like, I, uh, I I, think I have a lot of servants who I don't necessarily use, but I don't know if it's necessarily just because of mechanics, but more because of, like, investment and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lucky is trying to think through the people who's like, who he's like, I want you to be good, but you're not. MHX has all her buffs, though. She's fine. I need and- to do those. As soon as uh, well, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna actually. That's a good, a good point. I think I'll take this weekend and I'll do my MHX buffs and some stuff. But unfortunately, I don't think we should linger too much on this, and we're gonna move on. Um. So thank you, that one dude who tried to get Yagi with only Saint Quartz, only to walk away with MP2 comma, <sighs> but still can't get a dive to Blue Drop. This one comes from um, the Waifu Survey Department, who says the time has come. The people demand answers, and so the question must be asked. Who is the original best girl in Fate? Artoria, Rin, or Sakura? Um, it has been... I don't think we've ever been actually been hot, uh, shy about mentioning this. Um, Lucky's always been in Team Sakura. He likes him He likes him. his evil girls. Yeah, I mean, I, if, if, have you ever heard me speak? It's Rin. It's Rin. <laughs> Guys, it's Rin. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, I think... I, mean, I think we probably threw this out there way in the way back in, like, episode one. But also, if you haven't listened to episode one, I don't blame you. So... Mm. But no, we're not shy. No. Um, yeah, so, thank you, Waifu Survey Department. We're gonna move on, um, to Secret Servant Beer, here to, to tell myself a friend of mine from Studio Mega Secret Discord Police. We have a, a Secret, Secret Discord, Discord Police? Police. Hmm, hmm, hmm. At, at least the way it sounded to me, we said that at the exact same time. Yeah, no, no, to me, it did. I don't know how that turned out in audio, but... I hope that recorded good. <laughs> uh, me too. But this also means that Lucky's gonna have to go on a goddamn purge, because um, Lucky ain't tolerating those secret societies in his Discord that don't involve him. Alright. So, 
This one says, I have a question for you. Why is your... Okay. Secret Grammar. Server Beer. Why, why is your, I have a question for you, have a question mark on it? Your question is a question? Your que- Are you not sure that you have a question? I believe, uh, looking at this answer, I believe they have a question for us. Yes, okay. If Nasu slash Tap Moon decides to make an original anime content on YouTube, what would you prefer? The Misadventures of Miyamoto and Musashi during FGO. Type Moon TD... Oh, too long. Isn't this supposed to be TLDR? Yeah. Sir, where insert character recaps past stories, how heroic spirits react to insert topic here, and an interactive adventure about a holy grail war. Uh, Lucky would go with C, how servant spirits react to blank. That's always a fun be- one. Yeah. Doing, like, in-character react stuff. I think I would go that angle, too. Just as a, as like a web series. Yeah, it's perfect. I kind of hope it'll turn off, like, um, fucking how a Team 4 star did Krillin plays and Renegade for Life. Those made me laugh. Like, I do so know, much. um, there was that, I think it was a stream or something, but, um, there were, like, or maybe it was drama CDs. There was some stuff about, like, Tamamo and Nero playing, uh, Ken Cole. Um, <laughs> really? I, yeah. Um, I would, l- I would love to see dumb stuff like that, too. Like, we got VTuber <laughs> Rin, we should, you know, uh, have him, have him play games. Like, because oh. she's not in it at all, have, have VTuber Rin play Extella and just be like, everybody's having so much fun without me. What's this? Honestly, like, I would like to see VTuber Ryder because you, Asa- um, I, I can't remember if it's Asakura or Asakawa. Asakawa. Uh, Asakawa actually does stream video games. Yeah, she's a, I, I, it seems like when she's not doing VA stuff, she's a streamer in her free time. Yeah. And so. in particular, she likes Bloodborne. Um, uh. I also think she's been playing Nio 2 recently. Yeah, she's been playing Neo. She's played Neo two. She's played um, Devil May Cry five, and that's why she has this. She, I think, she still has V on her phone. I think. Yeah. But yeah. Um. Yeah. No. But that'd be great. But Secret Agent Beer here to tell myself a friendly reminder from the dis- uh, from the Studio Mega Secret Discord Police. Thank you for your question and prepare to be destroyed later. Ugh. Yes. Uh. And uh, go ahead and. You know, just uh, don't prepare. We'll find you. Yeah. So this next one comes from a smug laugh off in the distance. You thought it'd be a question, but it was me wishing you both good luck on upcoming summer banners. This dude, who I actually know it is, actually recently got off my shit list recently because he said a quite a witty comment. I was like, no, I like that. And I was like, all right, you may now get off my shit list. That's usually how that person works. Yeah. Also, it's it, one love all the positive energy. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. We appreciate it. I'll be sure to let you know that it was fucking worthless after three hundred and sixty <laughs> points. But uh, th- I appreciate the thought. Yep. But also, I, I this is very funny because uh, I know that this th- they're not here right now. They're probably asleep. They're probably so I think it was funny with the smug bomb. Mm, smug like, bomb. No, you're asleep. You're asleep right <laughs> no, now. No sleep bomb. Hey, that's us. All right, yep. let's keep going. Yep. I think we've so, used about you. half our time. <laughs> Thank you, Smug Laugh off in the distance. Good luck to you, too. Next one comes from Will in Denial. Uh, question. You, uh, oh, this is a theoretical one, but it's not that bad. Uh, you can only go into as much or little detail as you want. Say you get to design a banner to bait unsuspecting players. The only rule is that it needs to include at least one star rate up and one four star rate up. It must have a theme. What theme would you pick? And if you feel going into details, what servant would it, would be on it? Hmm. I'm trying to think, what would be a fun banner theme? Uh, be, be, we'll just get this out of the way and mention that uh, everybody's thought of this hypothetical since there was an AOE banner with swimsuits, that there would be a single target banner with swimsuits. Um, mm. We'll just go ahead and skip that. Yeah. Let's see, let's see. What's a fun theme? Ooh, I mean, there's a lot of options. This has kind of the paralysis of choice. Like, I'm like, ooh, but there's a lot of fun stuff we could do. Yeah, I know. Like, my first thought is a uh, fucking Sakura face. Um banner that'd be a fun one my my thought immediately was like uh what if we did like because there are some artists who have done a lot of stuff what if we did like artist banners like a Raita banner does Raita have a four star though uh, uh, let me check besides welfare maybe not that might miss the qualifications let me check because he's not responsible for like ibaraki um there are there are other artists though who would probably qualify like as it that's my first thought because uh if you do a sakura phase banner that means in Four star slots you would have Parvati and um Lip Lip. And then for SSRs you could have um Summer BB, uh Melt, and uh Kama. And 
Let me tell you. Let me tell you. That's a dangerous banner for multiple reasons. Oh, technically, um, uh, Summer uh, Raiko. She's four stars. That counts. Oh, that's true. That's true. Oh, yes. That'd and King Proga. Yes. Big daughter. Could be a good one. That'd be very spicy. That would be like one, two, three, four, five, five stars on right to banner. Dangerous. <clears throat> Danger zone. Um, um, another one I just thought of was actually do Argonaut's banner because it's a trait. Oh, um, that'd be very interesting. Uh, do they have a five star? Oh, yeah, technically. You've either got, like, um, either, either Orion version would count, I think. Um, and you got some others. But you could have, like, um, Mindia, Medea Lily on there, Atalante. Isn't there a small Arc. banner at the next hall? Oh, Dia Scooty would be actually up there. What's up? Sorry. Oh, no, um, Loth says, uh, the small banner. And I'm like, is, doesn't Halloween have a small banner? Or I just, is all the smalls, um... I think, I think servants under a certain height get a... Because it's it's a joke about it being a children's park. Um, yeah. I think they get a um, a bonus. Yeah. What is the what is the banner on? Then? Hang on, let me see here. Uh, I think it's just Seath and I, but there might be Oni on it. I don't know. Um, I do know that in a future, I think in the Oni Land rerun, we get Ibaraki and Summer Ibaraki on that banner rotation. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. They do a lot of fun stuff with uh with the remixes and reruns. Um, I think an Argonauts banner would be a fun one and a. Um, conversely, you could also do a Trojan War banner: Odysseus, Achilles, Hector, uh, Chiron. I guess. Huh. Don't know. Honestly, the Halloween banner banner is kind of weird. Looking at it, it's Sitanai, um, Mochizuki, Mochizuki, and Ibaraki. Oh, well, I'm probably not. Well, I do need Ibaraki, maybe, but also, mm, I've already got like NP2 Chiyome, and I don't yeah. need Sitanai that red. But it also it also has a fucking uh, Tomoe uh, T. Do you want that? <laughs> we'll think about it. I don't. I don't think there's anything else I'll be spending tickets on on in that week and that month anyway. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah. The rerun has some rotation, but I believe Royal. I think Royalizing is a store CE. So uh, don't worry about that. Um. Forget servant banners. Can I just get a redrop CE banner? Yeah. Actually, can I just get like like I would like I would definitely like theme C E. Um Actually that would be that would be an interesting one. I'd love to see if they think about that because obviously with, with court summoning you can get higher tier CEs and you can get servants too, but like can you imagine a C E only banner? What if it took like either a special currency or it took like friend points, maybe at like a higher level? That would be interesting to do little rate ups and stuff. Mm. Could be interesting. That's a different question entirely. We should probably not linger too much on that. We got a couple. We got a couple ideas. Yeah. What else? Like I said, well, he still wants a maximum broken little Halloween devil. God damn it. God damn it. Hopefully we are doing that first year CE interview because that'll be a Da Vinci. Um, that should be a Da Vinci rate up later this year, and that should include all limited CEs from part one. Oh, shit. I forgot to hit start back on the timer. Well, now I will. Rip. Rip. Well, I guess we're doing it a little bit longer. Aren't uh, you how much time happy? is left on the timer? Uh, 48 minutes. Mm, okay. We've actually used up probably about half that half an hour left but well whatever uh let's keep going then all right so thank you well in denial uh, we move on to uh on parading proto who asked what is your most memorable and nostalgic part in let's talk fgo let's Nostal- talk FGO. nostalgic hmm and hmm. let's talk i don't oh. think i really have let's talk fgo nostalgia i just shit on our first episode in this earlier earlier today yeah we yeah, mm, I don't know. Like we've had some I mean, good episodes like, in the past. I guess, I guess, I guess the closest episodes, thing. Like, I think the closest thing I would say we would have to nostalgia that we harken back to is where the fuck is Ron? Like sometimes uh, re- I'm just like retweeting art quietly. By the way, <laughs> oh, hang on, let me actually. Um, yeah, but like I like it's like just sometimes I'm just like kick. I remember we used to do that. Yeah, but all the bits it. and stuff. Maybe like maybe there's nostalgia for like oh I remember when we started that joke. But in general, we're. I think we've talked about this before. We we like moving forward and moving on and like upgrading our tech, and we're always looking for doing bigger and better shows, right? Introducing new segments, etc. Memorable parts. I mean, a lot of people have their own bits. Um, there've been some funny, funny stuff. Uh, Lucky did roll the waiver in the middle of an episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I'm gonna skip this next one. Um. So thank you, Ombrading Proto. We're gonna move on to. Man who survives on thigh highs. Who says? Question. Hey guys, hope you're doing good. Doing aight. 
Question is, what feature or servant skill in FGO do you find yourself using more because it makes the game more fun? For example, I like art using Arts Tamamo Merlin for crit MP spam. Thanks again. Let's see here. What Honestly, feature- the most the most time saving features are gameplay features like back button and mm-hmm. uh redoing quests. Um and you know, I don't know. <laughs> So here's here's Lucky Sassy answer. The thing I like the most is I like hitting the next button on text because it means I get to read more of the story. Hey, that's a feature technically. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This this is kind of a broad answer. Like mostly, mm-hmm. I use skills because they're fun. I don't I don't have any particular like gameplay gimmicks I do to like make it more entertaining. Another feature I like I like using um, servant MPs because they make the stream go boom. That's very fun to me. Yeah, I like to NP too. Super techs are cool. <laughs> Who doesn't love that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, thank you, man. Who survives on thigh high? So we're gonna move on forward. This next one comes from Lancer. Lucky, Luck. I oh. think they were trying to get us to talk about Scotty looping. I don't fucking care. <laughs> All right, very well. Lancer Luck. Lancer Luck. What survey do you think the developers have most fun taking in account the art and? It- Art, account art, name, skills, MP, and description are just one of the above. Um, personally, I say Santa Lily just because the name is ridiculous and the description even calls it out, but I'm interested in hearing what you guys think. So clearly uh, you just wanted to tell me that you think Santa Lily was it, but... Well, to be fair, John Arc Alter Santa Lily is indeed a very, very deep joke. Mm-hmm. They a lot, a lot of effort was put into making that one go that far. Um... Honestly, I think my immediate response right now is actually going to be Summer BB, honestly. Um, Because Summer BB, like, some people actually, because I was actually talking about, like, references and whatnot in Servants. And Summer BB has a lot under her hood that you guys might not realize. Yeah, Um, and you'll see some more of those jokes when the event actually pops. Yeah. But, yeah. um, But, like, um, yeah, because Summer BB is just full of references and deepest lore. Um, I'm I'm excited to roll for her and feel my soul slowly die. Um, I mean, I would say that as an artist, um, Redrop probably had a lot of fun doing comma. Ah, uh, yeah, with the multi stages and and styles and stuff. Mm, I'm trying to think, like animation animators. Um, I expect animators and the and the art design team had a lot of fun with Hokusai. It's because it, that's another servant talk about who's I, not necessarily weirdly popular because super famous art. Um, but. Hokusai has been actually been used for a lot of stuff in FGO, like a lot of poster childing, and oh, really? became a welfare pretty quick. Yeah, there was a whole fucking water show. Um, really? Yeah. Um, I, it was just for a couple of nights, but there was a promo thing where they did like a water light show with with like Mash and Hokusai, and it ends with Hokusai Hokusai's NP playing basically on a on a water based hologram. Cool. Yeah, I think that was that was in a town that I think was associated with Hokusai, but I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, mm. no, like. Hokusai has been referenced a lot by art and art stuff for FGO, which makes sense. Mm. Space Sister is another one that's like um, got a lot of a lot of because the multi stages and stuff. Mm-hmm. And actually, um, that was in the Nasu and Takeichi interview. They talked about because they they asked Nasu about uh, dropping Halloween, right? So mm-hmm. they talked about like how Space Sister came out and kind of like working on redesigning her to be slightly different. Um, originally, she was a little bit more plain, um, mm-hmm. like. A little bit more sci-fi, but a little bit more pl- plain design that they kind of spiced mm-hmm. up for the different stages. Um, also, Nasi went out of his way to um, add Calamity Jane to the event, because she'd been designed since launch. They just literally had nowhere to put her. <laughs> so they found a place to slide her in. Um, who was the... Th- there were three servants they said that were in the longest time. It was... I might have to dig the interview back up, but it... Um, Canis was one, because um, they designed Canis as early as, like, Lost Belt launched, but didn't have a place to put her. Um, and Calamity Jane, obviously, was another one that art, like, they touched up the stuff, but that that stuff had been, like, mine for forever. Let me see if I can mm-hmm. dig it up. There's a dog whining. I might have to go deal with it. Yeah, maybe a different interview. Uh, oh, it's, it might be in the brief summary. Not the literal translation. You probably heard my, my browser being, like... Oh, red hair was the, was the third. Ah! That which also makes sense. Oh yeah, and uh, they found that projection screen. Um, so do we need to, we need to take a second or? Yeah, give me a second here. All right, I gotta go check on this. I gotta go check on this we'll dog. Mm-hmm. And I am gonna remind Lucky to restart the timer if he stopped it. Uh, I didn't stop it. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. We got some bonus time. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah. All right. So, what question were we on? We were on the no, most fun. Yes. Yeah, I don't really have any more super thoughts on that. Yeah, me neither. Then, so thank you, Lance. Luck. We're gonna move on to Ozamandio Ferro of Zawa. Who asks? Hey guys, this one's for Omega. As a player player of children's card games, I'm curious: Is there a localized fate one? If so, would you consider doing a video or stream on it? Keep up the great work. Hope you two make some spicy dojin uh, this summer. Freezing. Um. So you knew? Yes, but knew. Um, or as we like to say, yes, but actually no. Um, there, we talk about this, there is that, um, what is it, Y Schwartz? Yes. Um, has some fate characters in it. Um, I think there was some fate a tie with, oh no, there wasn't some fate a tie with, with Force of Will, that was other stuff. But there, there are some games that feature fate characters, I, other than FGO Duel, which is actually miniatures based, uh, which we won't do anything in because it's, um, we could probably get together to do like something on TTS. I haven't super examined that, but I know it exists. They've also got the the uh, Grow War board game, but again, that would require me to study up on the rules because that's not officially out in English. But um, there's no like absolute fate card game. A little weird, but yeah. So I'm like, no, I don't think there's anything necessarily localized we could we could work with. If there is audience, let me know in the comments. I'm you know I have thoughts and feelings. I I'm free to try lots of stuff, but yeah, for the moment, I don't think there is, and there would be nothing for me to work on. <laughs> So, Ozymandia Pharaoh of Zawal, thank you very much for your question. This next one comes from The Deep, who asked, uh, Dear Lucky Omega, what characters do you think need a redemption arc in the Lost Belt chapters? Always thought Boudicca needs one. Uh, my immediate thought is, what? Why? What does so Boudicca this, need? This is a, what we, this is, by the way, what we like to call a loaded question in the biz. Um, redemption arc has a very strong implementation. I believe what they're going for is they're talking about how Lost Belts have generally been refreshing characters in Part 1 who maybe didn't get as much character focus and detail, right? Mm -hmm. um, but even though, Boudicca, like, still gets a lot of character fucking... Yes. Like, like, like she showed up in Septum. Like, great, it wasn't the greatest show up, but you got great character. Right she shows up in, um... In, um... Karnokokai. Okay. Karnokokai, okay, thank you. And she just showed up... She showed up at the end in the Solomon chapter. She show And she sh just showed up in Summer 2 rerun. And a lot of the times, it's her, like, hashing out her fucking beef with Nero, where she's all like, I want to be mad, but I can't be mad, but also, I'm gonna get fucking mad. Yeah, basically. People people are upset she's not mad enough, Lucky. Why? Let her just be a fluffy Onason who wants to dote on you. No! Historical characters must murder, Lucky. Uh, murder! No. Yeah. Sorry. Like, on, like, yeah, we, like, we, like, we're oh. dunking on your question a little bit. Sorry about that. I'm, but... <laughs> Like I said, that's what was just said. This is a loaded question. Careful with those kids. Like um, and like, what characters need a re like a redemption arc? Like or like I, I I don't know. Like I think there might be some like some characters who are definitely underutilized and, and um underutilized. Like well, like, I mean, I'd say this. I I would like every character in Septum who didn't already get a feature to get a feature. Um, like I think we can exclude Waver from that. That was a big deal in uh Fate Zero XL, which is going to mm -hmm. be run later this year. Um, like we said, they do keep bringing Boudica back, so. It's not like it's she's like, where's, where's, where's my where's my Tamamo focus chapter? That's an yeah, it's a big one. There hasn't been a lot on Tamamo herself. She got left out a little bit. Kentoki, I think they kind of brought back because they made him a welfare right. He's yeah. been and he's been a centerpiece in a lot of those events. You know the various Raita type events. Um, it's like if I remember correctly, Tamamo like got a showing at like as a fucking almost cameo. Basically in London. Yes. Uh, uh, I feel like they shoehorn Tomo into London just because they're like, and now Tomo will be permanent. There you go. Boom. And we like I said, Les, like summer one was like I said, that was our first summer. There was a lot of experimentation going on there. So the story wise, it wasn't necessarily the best though. So no, we didn't. There were there were cameos from all the characters and doing the little little bits. Yeah. But, like, Tomo has really never had, like, deep, rich story in FGO, despite being, like... Kind of a big um, deal? Yeah, kind of a big deal. Yeah. Well, as I said, Lucky doesn't know what's going on with Tomo Vich, so I don't count her right now. Well, yeah, and we, sh we shouldn't necessarily, because, oddly enough, Cat has had several appearances and cameos in the story as well. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily super deep, but they are separate characters, so... Yes. Um... So, but, like, a redemption arc? Uh... Like I said, like, again, like, as Omega said, I'm not entirely, like, I'm not entirely sure what they mean by redemption. Like, someone who just, who hasn't gotten a lot of screen time, maybe get the spot on the shot line, who's someone who had maybe previously 
a, hor- a horrible first time, maybe get a better one. I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, but as I said, um, as I said, I'm going to sass you for your thoughts on Budica needs one. I was like, I can't, I can't tell you you're wrong, but I can tell you a lot of reasons why I think the opposite. I mean, I can think why the opposite. And as I said, I guess a redemption arc, give me, give me more Tomomo. Lucky is always going to be like, would you like more Tomomo? Lucky's answer is always yes. So we're going to move on. Thank you, The Deep. We're going to move on to Zed. Just Zed. They call me Zed. Just Zed. Yeah. Actually, no, 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 no. They call me Zed. Just Zed. There we go. Who says, not a writing prompt, just wondering if you ever considered this. Honestly, I'm wondering, have you ever guys considered the ponder- overpowered server? Blech. Let me try that again. Honestly, I'm wondering, have you guys ever pondered the overpowered abilities of a servant who is the offspring of two different servants of people shipped together? Like Asterios and Urale, or S- Saber Altar and Emmy Altar. How powerful would those kids be? Honestly, if you're pondered this, and only if you have, what is the ship in F- uh, Fate Go that you think would have the scariest kids? If not, a simple yes-no um, answer to the first question is fine. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Zed, just Zed, but Lucky has literally never thought about this. Uh, the answer to this is no and no, um, though I would like to say this is what we call a leading question, because by ans- framing the question to us, we must technically have considered it. Mm-hmm. However, prior to this, no. And since you said that if we answer no to the first part of the question, we don't have to answer the rest of the stuff, no. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so, Zed, just Zed. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to Alias. Insert a music name here. Billy Bob. So Billy Bob wants to know, Hey, y'all. So I noticed this, and I wonder if there's a legit story for reason for this, or if it's the rule of cool reasoning. Why does Summer 2 rerun, part 2, use Babylonian you know, Servant so much? From Quetz Vice Roden, Tinkido, and Gorgon, as M. Mates, and Ishtar being our sponsor. Why? Regards, Billy Bob. So... Um, that is because it is actually quite a follow-up to, believe it or not, um, Christmas in the Underworld, where Rin gets a wild idea. Um, because, like, honestly, this is very much a follow- a very- a follow-up, um... Well, okay, the first version of this came out before Merry Christmas in the Underworld, so... Yeah, I know, but still. But, the- the- the weird thing about Merry Christmas in the Underworld is even though it was, like, was it, like, a full year later, I think? Right? It was... It was... Yeah, it would be a full year later after Babylonia, wouldn't it? No, I'm not after Summer 2. I mean after Babylonia. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was still set, like, right after Babylonia had happened. So it was... We got a little timey-wimey there. That's a little timey-wimey, but when you put it all in a row, it's literally Babylonia, Merry Christmas from the Underworld, and then Summer... um, The Summer Race. Like I said, who knows? Maybe they literally did all this writing at the same time. We don't fucking know. But... No, there's definitely a bunch of themes in there. Um, as I said, um, like, um, turns out, fucking, um, like, spoilers, um, Kingu and Inki, uh, um, Kingu and Inkidu, maybe they're the same person in this fucking event, who fucking knows? Well, and um, if you do Enkidu's interlude, the newest one, Enkidu, um, gets a little bit of chain goop back from Kingu. Yeah. Um, as I said, that's the whole entire reason why, uh, Enkidu wanted to destroy the prison, because he wanted to free Gorgon, because he didn't want, um, Gorgon to, you know, be this prisoner. And, you know, like, Quetz, Quetz could have, like, honestly, um, stayed or gone, but, uh, Quetz is also the goddess of the Morning Star, a.k.a. Venus. Yeah, she has Venus ties, and Mm -hmm. especially with the... It's more from part one than part two, but they were already doing a lot of Venus themes in this. Um, oh, yeah. And also... Like, fun fact, like, guys, like, most of the women in part one are main after geological features on the surface of Venus. Um, well, yeah, and that. actually all the the area names are. I think we talked about it before. Like, um, Boudica Crater. Yeah. Uh, Art, you know... Um, Atlante Plains. The, Atlante Plains. Uh, Penthesilla... Penthesea, excuse me. Uh, uh, yeah. No, I actually looked it up. Like, fucking, um, all, like, almost all terrain features in, on um, Venus are named after female goddesses. And, yes, actually, um, that's a thing. Um, NASA, NASA and the International Space Organizations have, have rules for official names for stuff. So, yeah. um, thematically, lots of, st- um, thematically, a lot of the stuff on Venus is, is named after female mythological figures. Yes. So, there's, there's, there are a lot of International Astronomical Union naming conventions. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, this fucking reminds me. So, Lucky's gonna, okay, because Lucky's tangenting, I'm gonna put a pause on this fucking timer. We got Fair 30 enough. minutes left, but I'm gonna tangent, because there's a story that, like, blew some fucking people's mind, and I wanna tell it, because 
Um, you people might not get this, but Lucky does lore research on his own. And, like, does anyone actually know the story of how Quetzalcoatl actually became the fucking Morning Star? Sit down for a second. I'm going to tell you. So, oh, I'll, I'll make it as posted. The list of geological features on Venus. Yeah. So, one day, I can't think of his fucking name, but basically, Jaguar Man, um, I can't remember, it's like Tetsapaka Laka, Laka Laka, Jaguar Man got fucking Ketz drunk, okay? Like, uh, there's some debate on whether it was just, like, just tricked him with alcohol or gave him some cursed wine or something, or whatever, but got Quetzalcoatl fucking drunk. And in this drunken snake, Quetzalcoatl went to their sister, who is this pure and chaste priestess, and had relations with her. Most historians agree it was fucking incest. The day after, Quetzalcoatl was so fucking embarrassed and shamed that they had their followers build a stone box, and at which point Quetzalcoatl got inside, set themselves on fire, and burnt to death. At which point their ashes rose into the heavens and became the Morning Star. This is also now, what Quetzal's NP is. Yes. Now, this makes me kek immediately because, for one... As a servant, that means literally Ketz's, like, weakness is alcohol, which kills me immensely. Just thinking about how easy it is for Ketz to get drunk and how probably fucking leery she is of alcohol. Actually, um, in other media, you can actually see this, uh, re- uh thinking about, like, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kobayashi's, um, maid dragon, uh, Quetz, the Quetz coddle in that one, just all like, fuck alcohol, get that shit away from me. But also it means, like, so, this actually had me immediately think, doesn't that mean that Shuten is literally fucking Quetzalcoatl's kryptonite? I'm just like, yeah, Probably. she has an alcohol-based MP, and she's an assassin. So, yeah, um, let me just get some fucking uh, images of fucking Shuten bullying cuts. That would make me kick super hard. But, yeah, but that's, like, the legend of um Quetz becoming the fucking Morning Star and why it's, like, it's uh, associated with Venus. So... Yeah, um, why is uh, Quetz associated with Venus? Because she got drunk, fucked her sister, and burnt herself alive because of it. Morning Star. There's a lot of Venusian deities. It's fun. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, by, by the way, here's another fun one. Um, not that it'll come up, but... um, uh, I, don't know how, how do I, I don't know how to spell Estrecrea. Yeah. Um, I think she's got a, um, a crater on Venus or something, too. Oh, really? Let's see if I can find it again. Makes sense. Reggio. Ah, there's an Asteria Reggio. There might be a different spelling, though. But there's a lot of different little, uh, a lot of these things you should look for. Um, and they have a lot of themes, like, um, Regio Regions. I know, God, don't, don't even begin to talk about space stuff too much, but, um, <laughs> Regio Regions are usually seem to be associated with names for tight, tightnesses or giantesses. Mm-hmm. Big deal ladies, because they're big deal features. Um, there is a Lakshmi Planum, which is a large plane. And then there are Plantia. There's a lot of fun stuff in here. Patere, Plantia, Tesserae. Linne, that's line-shaped features, by the way. Um, Hippolyta is a uh, linea, a line-shaped mm-hmm. feature. Oh, hey, uh, I don't remember what fossae coordinates through. There's an oif fossae, oh, really? an Aryan rod fossae. So there's a lot of there's a lot of different stuff. Mm-hmm. Here's a Valkyrie. But I just wanted to tell that real quick, so mm-hmm. I'm going to restart that timer. Oop. Yeah, there is literally a Valkyrie fossae. Oh, wow. But yeah, that's that was the joke of part one. Um... So, yeah, um, also in general, I was going to say before we got on our cuts tangent to talk about, about the event. The other mm-hmm. thing was that, as like you talked about, chronologically, um, Merry Christmas from the Underworld happened first, and it gave Ishtar some ideas about large scale rituals and stuff. Um, is that, uh, in that, we totally missed Ketz. Um, oh, yeah. remember, when we, when we went to the get- gate where Ketz should have been waiting, um, a Reshkal had just come in and just completely bounced her ass out of her Underworld. <laughs> So, yeah, um, that could also be a thematic thing of, like, there's a little chicken and egg there, but that could be a thematic thing of, like, okay, well, Ketz isn't going to be in this Underworld-type theme, so we're going to uh, work on her in the, um, uh, yeah, whatchamacallit, with the, the current event. Mm-hmm. Also, by the way, Lucky reading all that, do you remember that um, lots of Mesoamerican mythology and legend is really, really metal? Oh, yeah, no. Um, OSP does have a couple of videos on this that you might want to check out, but it's also very weird and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, are literally the no modern are. sun, the more modern sun god, Huisipochi, um, he actually, you may have seen him like holding a weird curved, um, sword thing with a face. That's not a sword thing. That's the fire serpent, Shokwatl. He is literally holding a tiny, a tiny winged serpent of fire 
<laughs> as a weapon. He's just holding it in his hand. It's, it's crazy. It's bananas. Great. Also, the Earth wants to eat you. <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, okay. Um, there are certain regions of biodiversity in South and Central America, which is like the. I could see how people got the impression that Mother Nature wants to fucking eat you if you go into the jungle, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's it's still a little weird. It's always interesting thinking about cultural stuff. Let's continue though on with the questions. Yeah. So thank you, Billy Bob. Um, we're gonna move on to Mercava Main doing a T pose. Since we aren't doing any teams on the server this year, I was wondering what teams are you guys rooting for in this rate this year? My vote on Tyrannical Shoot and Star this year. P.S. Congrats on EA for making taking beauty, Desert Beauty to their first victory. Lucky was only hoping that Desert Beauty got a victory for once, and we did. Yeah. But other than that, I really didn't care that much. I'm no. sorry. It's like, I think, like, and we it, explained who I think overall won for us earlier. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't do to slightly expand on this. We didn't do team sing in the Discord again because we did it already, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. So. I wonder if they've fixed Misik so he does it automatically. I'll have to double check later. Uh, not that I think we have a lot of team based stuff coming up, but oh, if we ever yeah. do, eh. fucking the fucking Kets show at fucking uh some at uh anniversary four that was great. Someone just posted a gift from it. Uh, well, that's because in the stage play, um, uh, Kets is actually a the actress that got to play Kets is a professional wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she actually has some uh, she named some of her moves when she came back after the stage play. Um, after cats, so it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's great. All right, so this next one comes from uh, Undead Fox, who asks, "Dear Lucky Mega, my question is: Do you think we'll get a way to increase MP levels other than get a another copy of the servant? I wish everyone has a ranked luck for their rolls. Probably so, not. Probably not. Like I said, this is not a bad question. This is not a bad question. It's no, people, it's a good speculation, some, but." No, Honestly, most, most gacha games have this kind of multiples effect, whether it's to limit break and increase your level cap or whatever. We already have all those systems, so yeah, I think scaling the NP level is the only thing you can really do with dupes, and uh, the game doesn't want to do with do away with the need for dupes, because sometimes you get dupes, right? Yeah, like, I'm trying to think, like, I'm trying to think of other gacha games I've played, I, like, I can't think of any game where there's alternate means to get, like, to use dupes than usually just shoving them in the original. Yeah, no, it's usually what you do. Whatever, it, it has different effects, like um, in Girls Frontline, for instance, dupes are a, a free, quote-unquote, way to um, dummy link to kind of increase mm -hmm. your overall power and HP. Yeah, but it's that's not still, quite like... like an NP level, but it's similar. Um, like, well, actually, I take that back. I take that back. In, in Destiny's Child, you know, a game I've been repping around, you can actually do something fun. You can actually, they have a thing called a House of Reincarnation where you can take, what was it, like five? It was five or six five stars and you can trade them for a single um um a single um five star and it's like you can set up the rotation so you can get one of like one of six so i think that's like the only system that lets you do something else but with um ssrs then um yeah directly anyway it seems yeah. like because um yeah. so you did mention that in in azure lane there are bullens to substitute but also remember oh, that true. in in azure lane that's the thing you do with multiples is break the level cap though it's a limit breaking mechanic so um, that would be, to put that in perspective, that would be like if you needed to ascend your servants, you needed a second copy of them. Um, so you can understand why Azure Lane does let you use Bullens. Because, holy shit, if you couldn't, damn, that would just be rough. Awful. You know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Undead Fox, thank you very much for your question. We move on to Alias. Remember to give your neighborhood Ushi a head pat. Please do, everyone. Go right now, log in. Patrushi. So their question is So my question is given how servants are able are are able to slash can change their sandgrams as they will during a gag event, are there any other times where they're able to do that in story, aside from homes? Or do you think they need to get back to the throne of heroes and be resummoned? The other question is no, uh there are some cases. Um the one that comes immediately to man is Atlante. It is actually noted in her profile that if you for Atlante Altar, if that you are just to remove the fucking boar from her shoulder, she just turns back into regular Atlante. Yeah, the the reason Alter being a berserker is either probably some weird stuff or just an excuse for like, well, she acts like a berserker anyway, and we we want to do different mechanical stuff. Strictly speaking, with the way um, uh, Agrius Metamorphosis works, is no, she just switches forms. If you were to, if you and like like you said, if you were to just peel it off, she would just go back to regular and could switch back. I think it was just, it was mostly a mechanical thing. There is some fluff where, like, if she put the thing on, she could, like, freak out and even not recognize her master, and so would be like a berserker. So, 
there were elements to it, but yeah, that's 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 one explicit mechanic where just like no, they can t- she can totally switch between those two forms. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other particulars. Uh, uh, like I said, I'm I'm like I'm noting things, but yeah, most of the times, like it's like in summer events, usually you see class changes. Yeah, in like summer event like, that was explicit in in actually no, I think even in th- we'll get better explanation in three, but I think even in three, some of it is just like li- literally um because you actually play some of the first matches with with just like say vanilla Ushi and vanilla Ibaraki. I think they literally become summers by like putting on their swimsuits. Yeah. But, like, um, in Summer 2, um, like, when Raiko decides, all right, I'm not going to use the sword, instead I'm going to use this lance, she actually goes, like, an entire, like, personality shift, except she doesn't, because it's all a lie. Yeah, but the, that was, all the team setups in, um, in Summer Part 2 explicitly explain who is becoming what and how they shift, and it's, yeah. yeah. Um, there are some cases where, like, in, I don't know how canonical it is, but in CCC, for instance, when you're doing those quests, Tamo mm-hmm. switches between herself and Lance herself. And Nero mm-hmm. can upgrade herself to Bride. Mm-hmm. Um, that that seems somewhat canonically established. Um, but other than other than forms who have multiple entities in one Saint Graph, like um, Valkyries, for instance, mm-hmm. who can switch back and forth, uh, it's pretty rare for servants to actually like um, work on this stuff. So um, remember to give your neighborhood Ushi a head pat. Thank you very much for your question. We're gonna move on to Panflin Kun. Who asked? Hey, Lucky and Omega, this is a simple question and more about gaming in general than about FGO. That's fair. In your games, do you prefer gameplay over story the other way around? Or does it have to be both to be a good game to you? Thanks for the great content as always. Keep it up. So, um, Lucky's going to preface this as Lucky is someone who, well, I won't necessarily, I say I have trash taste, but it doesn't take a lot for me to be to enjoy something. It really doesn't. I think we've talked about this. Both of us have relatively low floors for enjoyment. Yeah. Like, um, I, I especially, some people might get the impression I like really complex things. And no, I do like some deep dives, but also, sometimes you just want to relax. Mm-hmm. So, like, knee-jerk reaction to this question, Lucky usually would prefer good story over gameplay, usually. Um, as I said, um, Lucky has been a avid reader since he was a child, and while he, like, there are definitely some times when, like, deeper story goes over his head, he be all, sometimes he's just all like, no, this is a... This just makes me happy inside, and I'm going to keep reading it. Um, but other times, yeah, like, also, gameplay is definitely something that I don't want to skimp on either. Like, mechanics, like, Lucky likes fiddly bits in his games. He likes customization. He likes doing a whole bunch of weird stuff. Just don't make it too, just don't, uh, just don't make it too complex or too hard, otherwise he's just going to rage quick like he did Sekiro. So, um, yeah, I think the the best way I can answer this is a game is really good if it has both. If oh, it yeah. has a story that grips you and that you care about and enjoy and doesn't make you really mad, um, not gonna not gonna fire too many shots on that. But there's, I think there is a fine point that people are thinking about now between a story that's like deep and cool and thoughtful, but also if it pisses off your audience or not. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, Lucky Beat goes to Tsushima. Prepare for thoughts of um, for thoughts about that tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you know, you you usually need really good tight gameplay to keep people in. Mm-hmm. I think the thing that matters is that for me anyway, it just it, both are good if you can get both together, but only need only one needs to be good for it to be okay. Just the other one can't be bad. If mm-hmm. you have bad gameplay, if you have shitty buggy gameplay, people will be like, "Oh, the story's really cool. Gameplay's awful though." That's the kind of shit where like um people are still playing Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines now, um but they have patches and shit to make it functional. Because the gameplay is kind of buggy and crappy. Mm-hmm. Um, converse, I mean, conversely, plenty of games have good gameplay loops, but if your story's bad or people don't like your story, or, God forbid, even worse, your story is, like, not bad as in it's just, like, trashy, but, like, you you tell bad stories and bad story themes, whether that's just, like, you approach themes that are just unconscionable these days, or, you know, you're just awfully written. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter how fun your game is. If you're If people aren't entertained by the story... If it's still there, it's gonna bother them, and they're not gonna want to finish it. Like, no, yeah. So you you need the beauty of video games is that they can have both, and video games are at their best when you get both. But a game can totally cruise on just tight gameplay or just good story. Yeah. So Panflin Kun, thank you very much for your question. We're gonna move on to Sidaren trying to flex in front of Kyo, Kyo by lifting Hurt Stone Axe. It didn't end well. That sounds like back pain. 
They say, hey there, Lucky Omega. How are the wife and kids doing? My wife just left me, and my kids are screaming for their allowance, and I'm super fucking broke. <sighs> wow, Lucky's looking in a dark direction. I was just going to be like, huh? What? They drive me to drink. Everything drives you to drink, Lucky. That is true. I like drinking. It lets me forget. But they ask, so what's your guys' favorite fan, uh, fate fan work for the Fate series? Like the webcamics fan art. If there's a fan art, then who's your favorite artist? Hope you guys keep are keeping it real and having a good time. So, I don't know about, like, favorite fan work. I mean, look, it reads a lot of doujins, if you know what he's saying, but... I don't know if I'm, like... I don't know, like, I like Fuwei's stuff. For reasons. Yeah. Like, uh, when Fuwei comes on uh, to Twitter with some Carmilla stuff, I'm just like, this is good. This is getting retweeted. And he's all like, it's mm-hmm. coming, I'm coming out with a new thin book. I'm just like, this is also good. Yep. It's cool. Um... I mean, like, but, there are artists, also, though, a lot of the artists are actually, like, we like Redrop, and they draw a lot of fun, cool fan stuff, but they're also officially in FGO, so that's a little mm-hmm. weird. Mm-hmm. Um, in general, I don't have any specifics, though, because it's like, eh. Mm-hmm. I follow lots of artists, I see lots of art on Twitter, it all kind of blurs together a little bit. Uh, let's see here. For fan art, like, definitely, I guess, would be Fue at the top. Pochi does some, occasionally does some FGO stuff. Hirame does some good stuff. Fucking, uh, uh. I'm trying to good fa- stuff. You should look in Art Dump right now, Lucky. Son of a bitch. You're distracting me. Yeah. God damn it. God damn it. I'm going to retweet that. God damn it. It's been retweeted. God damn it. How dare! So fluffy. So that. Anyway. Um. But, like, webcomics and stuff? Minimo's usually pretty entertaining, but that's the only... And Daily Melt is Keck. A Palladium per day. But other than that, I really don't know. Lucky's not, like, super big into that stuff. So, side Darren trying to flex in front of Kyo while by lifting Herc's stone axe. It didn't end well. Thank you for your question. This next one comes from Force BB Panty Shots. Dangerous. Who asks? Dear Lucky Omega, I really enjoy watching Let's Talk FGO and have been a day one viewer. Well, thank you. Thank you for the many hours of entertainment. Well, thank you for watching. My question is, what area of the world would you like there to be a lost belt in? Also, a side question, what's your favorite non supers concept? Like the radical pruning effect or the quantum time lock, for example? Uh, I'm pretty sure we've answered the second one probably a couple times. And I'm pretty sure we've said we need someone to re-ask the first one because I had to think about it. Lucky has thought about it. Oh, okay. We got it. Um, uh, this I one does seem ha- a little more open-ended than they usually are. Yeah, yeah, but um, if I had the uh, Mega Pest, I would definitely like to see a World War One or World War Two Lost Belt. That'd be wild. It could be interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That I'm wouldn't lucky. actually, and it, that wouldn't actually come up in the Cosmos in the Lost Belt, but it would be an interesting concept. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Unless it actually mattered somehow in the yeah, who knows? Lost Belt. That could be weird. Who knows? Shit's weird. Um, I gotta be honest, as as, as much well, and again, it makes sense because of the whole Age of Gods thing, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like, sadly, this is yet another, especially after the America chapter being geographically and, like, American history-wise so fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Um, we missed an opportunity not to have an America Lost Belt, but also I understand America's really recent and stuff, so. Mm-hmm. the And the fact that we're getting a Mesoamerican one, um, or even South American one, I think. I think it doesn't even go. I think it even is far south of the Mesoamerica. Um, will, in its own way, probably be really interesting. But, like, North America could have done some fun stuff there. They were fucking Vikings in Newfoundland and shit, you know? Like I said, the only thing that has to really change is there has to, like... Like, you say that, but remember, Lost Belts are something that based that something in the past changed, and then they went to the present. Right, but I'm just saying, like... You know, because America would have to have a history and a context that would affect the Age of Gods um, going forward. I'm not sure what could do that in North America based on the lore. Oh, that's true. Like, there's a couple of weird, greebly things in the south of the Americas that we could do some interesting stuff with. It's going to be a very interesting chapter. We're going to see. Um, I'm just trying to think, like, because obviously we know there were something resembling magecraft for Native Americans, right? Obviously, because we've got Geronimo mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, and they have their own myths and deities, but I don't know necessarily, would there be any, would there be any big mythological events we could have shaped or done stuff that wasn't already, like, way post-Age of Gods? I'm not sure. Nah, not like not on specific Americas. Like that shit gets like down into fucking 
south it's like the fucking like it's all it is really all south america like thinking about like the yucatan um peninsula crater thing yeah that's a group group. and i think that we have found some larger scale like a lot of people there is a there is a historical myth about oh the you know the native americans didn't have any big cities or didn't have any big uh nations that's not 100 percent true um but I don't think that, especially by the time we got to modern period, but even for large periods of time, I don't think there were a lot of big North American empires like there were mm. in. There were some really big um, unified cultures in a lot of areas of South and Central America. Um, but I don't know. I don't actually, I don't think even doing some reading that there were, like, we found some big cities. I don't know if there have been any big, like, empires in North America that could have like had like a like a big unified religion that would have mattered because there's there are a lot of indigenous religions but they're and they have some similar themes but also a lot of them are split because there is a lot of different uh a lot of diversity in North America mm-hmm. a lot of cultural diversity and in South in South America there seem to be enough at least from what I understand there have been a lot of like transitions of empires and cultures and periods mm-hmm. um Though, as much as, as much as, um, Olympus is cool, also, because that would have been right at the turn, um, I wonder if you could do a, like, uh, Roman Empire Lost Belt? Because that would have been, that would have been pre-AD, right? The start of the Roman Empire, just about. Mm -hmm. Um, so, like, I wonder if you could have done something, like, where maybe, like, Caesar didn't get assassinated, or otherwise the, the Empire set up a long, a longer Roma stuff, and, like, you know. And God, God forbid, imagine if, if um, Ro- Rome never Christianized. Oh, Jesus. Like, what if, what if we got to the year um, the year 2020 and the, the future was still, like, instead of a Vatican, it was still, like, the high temple of Jupiter or something in Rome? Oh, wild. That could, that could be an interesting one. Okay, also, for let's... your side question, uh, announces the kind of, I mentioned it before, it's the beasts. I think that's wild. I continue to think that's wild. Okay. Let's keep going. Is uh, the timer still ticking? Uh, Camera's still ticking. We got less than 10 minutes. Okay. Let's so go. thank you for us, BB Panty Shots. We're going to move on to Slightly Hot to High Speed Low Drag Go! Who asked, do you consider card games like Hearthstone, Shadowverse, Duel Links, and etc. as gotcha games? Well, do they have a system where you give them money and you get a random assortment of objects that you have slightly no control over? Okay. Well, so yes, but, but also no. It really depends on the way the game is built and how they handle it and how they actually do the, the rotations. Hmm. I think that gotcha style and trading card games or collectible card games do have similar, they're similar mechanics. They're not a one to one. And depending on how the, like you mentioned, the random stuff, depending on, I think on how the random stuff is distributed, it can be, it can be different. That said, most of them don't operate like how we think of gotcha games. Cause yes, you have cards that are characters, but usually you don't roll to collect specific characters you are collecting various cards and mechanics to build your decks with it's a little bit it's a little bit different on yeah, what you're collecting for but they but are definitely like in the same ballpark i don't know they like i'm pretty like i said like like i don't know if like they're like necessarily like uh because i know hearts is this hearthstone have a fucking physical version nope the hearthstone is all digital but you can have all digital card games i'm just thinking i don't yeah, know but, but hearthstone... like here's the thing like i'm pretty sure they probably have things that's all like yeah you can like pull on like this specific deck type or something well, as I say, I I was about to say I don't know their exact distribution, like how they do, like say an expansion or something, or when you get mm-hmm. how you get new cards. Like I'm sure there is paying to unlock new decks and stuff, but I don't I don't necessarily know how they break it up. So that would be something we need to do more research. I said my knee jerk reaction would be then um, in opposite to a mega probably. Um, yes, I think they're 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 qualified as gotcha games. Um, but uh, slightly hot to high speed low drag go. Thank you for your question. We're going to move on to Emblem. Who asked, since I don't have community posts turned on in my subscriptions feed to make it a little less cluttered, I end up seeing this post two days later than usual. On to the actual question. Out of the big four support servants, which one do you not like using in your team comps? I apologize. The wording seems a bit bad for the question, as there are times I just can't seem to get the right wording. Have a day evening to you, too, as I'll be looking forward to hearing this week's episode on Saturday. Oh, thank you, Emblem. Honestly, um, that actually works because you're three hours behind me. So mm-hmm. it's day for you. It's evening for me. But I think it's still yeah, oh, still super light out. Yeah. Um, Lucky doesn't use his Merlin. He refuses to use his Merlin. He has level one Merlin. He's all like, "Fuck that man." That's only um, because people are assholes about Merlin. I don't think Lucky has is necessarily that mean to Merlin. Merlin. No, no. But maybe a little bit. Maybe um, a little bit. to go the complete opposite of the answer. No, I love supports. 
even the ones I don't own. Because Omega's going to be the guy in, in, in a year and a half or whatever who is going to be picking Tamamo on that free SSR at this rate. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. I, I, have no, I have nobody I'm against. I will totally use Merlin Waver. I'll use double Merlin. I'll use double Waver. I'll do all the blah, blah, blah. I'll do the stuff. I can't do a double Scotty. That's not allowed. But whatever. I don't care. Like, I usually what? only go Unga Bunga double supports if the game is being mean to me. But I'm not, I'm not afraid of it. I'll use anybody. Like, look, he's not against Scotty necessarily, but also he doesn't have the time to invest everything I need to get fucking Scotty up to, what was it, 10 10? 10? Whatever. Yeah, usually, I think, for all the math. Uh, so I'm just like, heck. We don't I'll continue, I'll continue, I'll continue my, um, my art strats. They kind of work. Why don't you should make a thumbnail now that he thinks about it? Um. So, Emblem, thank you for your question. Uh, so this one comes from, this one comes from Alias David, Lord and Savior. Who asked? So, a revise of my question from Lightwork. If Kodra was a saber, who would Shiro get? Do you think it'd be possible for Shiro to summon assassin Emiya? Probably not. Like theoretically, like said, yeah, but also, uh, no, because I am pretty. I'm pretty sure. Like I said, I don't know. I have like, unfortunately, I haven't read his profile in Matt's, but I don't think assassin um, Emiya necessarily has a connection to Shiro. Yeah, assassin I Emiya mean, never met Iris, so yeah. So it's pr- it's probably like it's probably like the point at some point what Shiro did in the future where shit just got so fucked that living um Kiritsugu made a contract with the world and fucking just got yoinked yoinked on out. Um, so they don't necessarily have that karmic bond. Theoretically, it's possible. As I said, there is no such thing as an absolute rule in Nasuverse, but. Just by the conventions that we go by now, and instead of Nasu just game, fuck you, I'm making it happen! I want to say no. Um. So, thank you, David, Lord, and Savior. We're going to move on to Not So Random Mustang 651. Who asks, What's your favorite bond line in FGO? For me, it's both Nidocris's. She's even earned a pair of grails with them in her caster form. Now that I rolled her summer version, she'll get the same treatment. Well, let's get to Lula. Your chocolate wife's, but unfortunately, Lucky doesn't have the memory to recall bond lines. Yeah, I check them and I like them. I don't remember all of them. I think, I think I like both Ishtar and Arishka pretty good, but like literally everyone ever. No, I can't remember all those. I can't remember all those. Like, um, I think we've joked about how Carmillas are funny, and we remember them because that's the like, don't touch me, definitely touch me. Yeah. Um, but are those our favorites? Eh. Bond lines are cool. But they're definitely kind of like a personal and even sometimes in the moment kind of thing. Yeah, like uh, Bond 5 Atlanta Altar makes me hurt inside. Just like, oh, God. But I definitely would not say that's my favorite. You guys, o- audience, you may have heard Omega slightly like sliding around his microphone changing and other weird shit. Um, <laughs> I did get a new mat because my computer mat, you know, work mat was kind of starting to crack and get sharp edges and shit and fall apart. So I got a new one, but it's um a little low on the friction right now. So I'm a little slippy slidey. I haven't yet formed a divot where my wheels can rest, and uh, it's it's sliding around. So you may occasionally hear me slip, squeak, woo, in the back <laughs> as I just cruise. Let's do the next question. Next question. This question comes from Spot and Fire. Who asked? Hey, looking to make. I was just curious about which servant would you guys like to see most made an altar out of. Thanks for the show as always. We appreciate the work you guys put into the show. Thank you. Uh, altars. Altars. I'm pretty sure we've answered this at some point. Um, Lucky I've always wanted an Alter Drake. Reasons. But other than that, uh... I guess I want to see Alter Kiara now, because I just want to throw that into someone's face. And be like, behold! It's actually a good Kiara! How does that make you feel? Funny. Mm-hmm. It's funny, you didn't bring up your uh, hypothetical Drake Alter. I Not- did! Did you? Yeah. Completely blanked out on that. that was, you must have said that fast. I might have. That's okay. Now, now we're one for one, because earlier I said, oh yeah, we both agree about Geronimo, and then Lucky went, oh yeah! So we also <laughs> think Geronimo. Mm-hmm. So now we both blanked and said the exact same thing back to back at least once. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I don't really... This is one of those like forced hypotheticals I don't really go for. Alters are usually pretty specific, and I don't really have any super thoughts about like well, who should be an altar? Who shouldn't be an altar? Like, they've done some interesting altars. Maybe I could come with some interesting altars in my time. But it's just like, eh. It's a concept they have. 
maybe they should mm-hmm. use it more, but I don't necessarily have any, like, ones I want, I guess. Yeah. So, there you go. Thank you, Spots and Fire. And this one, is going to be our last one, comes from Alias Shion. Who says, Greeting Lux Omega. I recently heard your discussion about alignments with voice and made me realize a lot of waifus I have tend to be chaotic. Hmm. But my question is, what is the one servant you think people should in waifu because of alignment? Whoa. Okay, well, I mean, so... I'm a... <laughs> FGO alignments are kind of a joke. Uh, yeah. G- Gil and like, Fate Stay Night is chaotic good still, so... Eh. Like um, I said, like... Like, again, Lucky doesn't judge his wife is by their alignment. Also, you gotta remember, Lucky is also that person that's all, like, who holds out that coffee mug. Who's just like, give me that good shit, and the coffee is just labeled evil. Like... Somebody could make that meme. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's where I saw it from. But, like, as I said, like, Tom Moe's, like, was uh, neutral evil, Atlanta is lawful evil, Drake is chaotic evil, um... Al- al- alignment is a weird, and it, even though it uses the D&D alignment system, Nasir doesn't mean the d and really, he really doesn't mean the D&D alignment system. So, <laughs> it's, um, never mind that there's full of jokes, like, um, like, uh, yeah. upcoming John Summer will be Lawful Summer. Uh, which is interesting because she has a she has a buff for good servants. She's not technically good. She's summer, so it's it's uh-huh. it's funny. Um, but yeah. So first of all, I would say don't actually take alignment seriously. They're weird. That's the whole point of that episode we had with voice was just like alignments are an interesting talking point. They're fucking weird though. They're very specific and finicky and fate. Um, hello, comrade dog. Who would I say you shouldn't I like? There are definitely characters I would be like you're gonna fucking die. <laughs> Um, but that's not necessarily an alignment thing. That's more like just a general safety thing. If you blink at Kira, she's going to eat you. Right. Like, and, and even some other characters, like, like you can bad end in like, um, Melt's Valentine's, mm. which I didn't because I was just like, hey, cool. Thanks. Nice chocolate. Cause she's, she's like, dare ye enter my virusy realm. And I'm like, hey, neat, sick chocolate. She's just like, oh, okay. Well, cool. Thanks. I guess. Bye. Um, but, like, there would definitely be, like, some things I would be like, no, dog, you're gonna get melted. You're gonna get fucking get, get turned to goop. Don't do that. Who's this guy? Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't think I have any alignment-based warnings, but I definitely have characters I'm like, no, don't do that. That's bad. It's a bad idea. <laughs> so that was gonna time us out? Yep. Mm, we done. We missed a few. We missed a few. Yeah, we gotta see here. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it looks like we got through about thirty-ish. I think I skipped. That was with like an extra twenty minutes, by the way. Yeah, because we're at about two hours raw. Yeah. Oh well, we got some good questions. We got on some some tangents. Tangents. Anyway, uh, everyone, thank you for your questions. If you're thinking it right this week, please do not despair. Just send it in next week, and maybe we'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep them coming back. Um, okay, before we move into some free talk and some future Mega Sensei stuff, let's take a brief intermission. And we're back. Take a deep stretchy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, first we're gonna briefly detour into free talk. Yeah, you. Yeah. So, uh, apparently the fan game Fate Empire of Dirt is out in Japanese. Uh, this is a visual novel dating sim kind of game that, uh, has been hyping for a long time. I've been hearing about this, I think, ever since FGO has been coming out in the West, if not longer. Not that that's, you know, that weird, considering FGO is about to hit five, or technically has hit five years, so not that crazy. Um, It does have R18 elements. Lude. Um, uh, but it's out in Japanese. It's got some interesting designs. they got some characters. Some of them are still hidden. Uh, like, I don't think we know the caster's name, and there's a writer who looks kind of like MHX with an eye patch, but is not. Um, hmm. Probably. Probably. So they got some different design stuff going on. Sorry, I'm picking some bits that are flaking off my headset um but it came out and i it sparked a lot of discussion uh we'll see if an english patch comes out and then check it out anyway maybe it's just a little little notationist for people mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um but yeah okay then it is time to move into teach me mega sensei because it is technically as of the time we record this and post this to patrons anyway july it's july 31st so uh it's time for the teach me mega sensei for this month and you, y'all voted, our Five and Up patrons voted, and they uh, picked what is the Wandering Sea. So this one's going to be a little bit shorter, but I will summarize the information we have. And there's some little bits of a uh, wider Naziverse connection in there that some people might be surprised by. You never know. Um, and then Lucky's going to be like, what? Huh? I'm going to be like, what? Huh? So, uh, let's just uh, get into it. So, shush you. Talk, talk in the chat. 
Upside Down Man's trying to be sassy about the time and space. It's a third. It's the thirty first still in absolute in in um. What did I call it once? Like Central Omega Time or something? Omega <laughs> Ultimate Time? I don't know. <laughs> I, I I had some dumb grandiose name for me time, but yeah, it's still it's still the thirty first me time, future man. Um, a cot. Anyway, um, so like I said, gonna be a bit short. It's a little minimal, but um, high level first. Wandering sea. There were a branch. There are three great branches of the Mages Association, um, who is the big organization that handles Magecraft. We have talked about the Mages Association and the Clock Tower before. So go ahead and hunt that episode down for a deep dive. It's going to be somewhere in the Teach Me Mega Sensei playlist, because playlists are cool. Um, but if you want a deep dive on that kind of end of it, check that out. I'm not going to reiterate it too much, not even to pad my own episode. What you need to know is that, like I said, there are three great branches of the Mages Association. So there's the Clock Tower, and there's the Atlas Academy, and there's the Wandering Sea. You probably heard them all mentioned before. And in fact, um, we have uh, technically been to all three in FGO. Um, uh, with the exception of maybe the Wandering Sea, um, all of them were destroyed at the time, but we've been there. So, um, ever since the Clock Tower became the HQ of the Mage Association, the other two have drifted apart from it. So, Atlas Academy and Wandering Sea aren't necessarily super friends with the Clock Tower. Just kind of a thing they have. Mage politics. Hold on, I'm going to blow my nose. And now, equipped with proper breathing, I will continue. So, specifically, the Wandering Sea is the branch of the Association, which is in Northern Europe being a conglomerate of many minor groups throughout that area. So it's not like, we are the central group, the Wandering Sea, we were founded in this place. It's more just like, hey, we're all the little guys from North Europe who kind of came together and made a thing. That's the Wandering Sea. Um, so there's that going for it. Now, in fact, the Wandering Sea was basically the original Mages Association, interestingly enough. Um, they were kind of the collection of these mages in Northern Europe doing their mage thing, kind of coming together in the in the history. Um and they were spread throughout the region before the Clock Tower was created. However, since the Clock Tower became the headquarters of the Mage Association, they've effectively ceased communication with the other branches, however. So, I don't know if that's directly related or just their nature, but yeah. They used to be more important and more involved in the community, more directly tied, and then they stopped. So, this was, we're going to pay off on that joke from literally two hours ago. They are termed, and this shows up in the story you can see in FGO, as the Baldanders, as a kind of oh. nickname. This is a German literary fiction term which combines the words for soon and another. So, Baldander literally means soon another. Um, and they're basically a form of protean shapeshifter. They can take many, many different forms. Originally, it's meant as a metaphor about adapting to changing culture and society, but later it's used as an actual creature which wants to ha have the goal of changing into as many new shapes and obstacles or objects as possible. Uh, take what you will from that explanation. Um, but I called Lucky the, the Baldender one because of the shape-shifting thing. Lucky's very flexible. He's he's always juggling hats, switching plates, doing new stuff. Mm -hmm. And also he might secretly be a sea monster or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really know why they picked that term, especially because that's, I think, a super modern term, but whatever. Maybe it was a nickname somebody else gave him and they just don't complain. Honestly, it sounds like the Wandering Sea doesn't complain about lots of things. They just don't talk to you. Anyway, the reason why the Wandering Sea is called that and also called the Moving Tomb great names, guys, um, is because it is, in fact, mobile. It actually moves. This is discussed in Lost Belt 2, but it's actually a mover. Um, they are a moving mountain range, which is almost impossible to find on its own, and normally only opens to the outside world on December 31st, once a year. Isn't that, if I remember correct, for recruitment purposes? Yes, I believe so. I believe that's what's said um, in Lost Belt 2. That's how they, that's how they let new people in, is they, they normally only open up on the 31st. Um... And we don't really have any details of, like, where they open, how exactly they open, how people know where to find them. It's just a general magey mage thing. We shall only open on the day the 31st of December before the new year. And the archway shall open and the blah 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 and the hoodah what. It's very magey. Um, so, how the Wandering Sea is actually mobile is actually a really interesting thing, both thematically and in terms of actual non supers mechanics. So... The Wandering Sea is actually located in a separate texture, a different layer of reality from normal. So they are not on the surface texture, and they're not on the reverse side. They're sandwiched between the two. Um, there also means they're technically sandwiched kind of between the modern world and the past. Another great metaphor. Um, th this is all background stuff, but it's very thematic. I love it. This also is presumably how they still exist after the alien gods attacked. Because um, in Cosmos and the Lost Belt, except for the Lost Belt parts, the texture of the world has been bleached white and flattened, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but because they aren't in that normal texture, the Wandering Sea was probably okay. This also means that the reverse side may be okay. Who knows? Um, so, weird stuff. 
but still really cool. Now, this texture, this little pocket reality, is composed mostly of ocean. Shocker. Um, with just a single mobile island as the only landform, and it's the actual base of the Wandering Sea. They are actually in this rocky island, and the rocky island is also submersible. They really like their privacy, I guess. Um, though also, the whole Wandering Island you can only find at certain times and is blah 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 closable or disappears beneath the wave is another big key, like, mythological and literary fiction touchstone, too, so... It has thematic basis, but also it's uh, it seems really inconvenient from just me editorializing. But hey, what do I know? I'm not a bald ender. Don't ask me, Lucky. He's trying to get as much Nito ass in this frame as he can. That's a solid, solid uh, thematical going on there. What was even our thumbnail from last week? I don't even remember. Oh, it was all VTuber in. That's right. That's why I don't remember it very clearly. It just was one image. It was, it was hilarious. It was a joke. It was great. What was in the one before that one? Who knows? Anyway. It was the scene, okay. Um, so, uh, I will continue. Um, we actually saw this a little bit at the end of Lost Belt 2, if you've completed it. Because um, we, you know, bump in there. Um, there's not actually a surface entrance to the physical wandering sea. Yeah, you can't get into it from the island bit, even if it comes out of the water. The only entry point is a docking bay, which is around 40 or 50 meters under the surface. And I wrote that as surfaces in my notes. I don't know why. It's not plural. Anyway, um, people inside can draw in visitors by manipulating ocean currents, but normal vessels wouldn't survive the process, so you need either just a straight-up submarine or some kind of magic to get in there, which is presumably how we actually get in there. I was about to say, it's like, I'm pretty sure we're getting in via the ladder. Yeah. Magical protection and being semi-amphibious. So that's where they are, and physically what they are. What is the Wandering Sea all about? So their primary thing, the thing that is described as their hat, is that they are only interested in magecraft that dates back to the Age of Gods, and they turn their noses up at all forms of modern magecraft. They are only associated with old-style magic crafts, um, even if a lot of those are kind of reduced in power or whatever. They're all about studying the Age of Gods, so thematically they make a lot of sense to show up in Lost Belt. Um, Additionally, um, because they were the proto-association, like they were kind of the mage association before there was a mage association, it's also said that a lot of the founding members of the Mage Association who were deemed like heretical mages or, or otherwise restricted ended up fleeing or being exiled to the Wandering Sea. So basically anybody rejected from the Clock Tower Atlas Academy could end up there. Um, this also maybe has some ties to that Bald Ender thing, that shapeshifter. They kind of, you know, any any old person can fit into the Wandering Sea if they're able. Uh, we don't really know too much about um, how that kind of works out, but that's what they're about. Um, we do have some hints, though. They do have a few subcircles or internal organizations we know about. Um, one is the Prague Association, which is a group of alchemists who follow classical tenets of alchemy, and thus they have a poor relationship with Atlas. So they they are presumably more of the Paracelsus, Paracelsus style and even even earlier type alchemy. Um, we knew about Sponheim Abbey. That's a group that's said to be tied to the Wandering Sea, which actually tries to work with the Clock Tower. So they're kind of trying to bridge that gap. Um, and there is also mentioned a Thule Society. No word on if it's that Thule Society. But they study rune magecraft and have preserved many of the original primeval runes so their version hasn't declined. So that's a big deal, right? Um, mm-hmm. That's a big deal that several servants have. They have primeval runes which were taught directly to them by Odin or something. Uh, and a rune is a kind of external magic crest. If what is magecraft ever gets voted up, we'll probably talk about that. But the short version is that like lots of forms of magecraft, technically the basic runes have kind of degraded over time because lots of people know them and they've you know, passed through succession generations. But the Thule Society working in the Wandering Sea has access to those old-ass runes that still have some of their original power. Spooky. And that's kind of, uh, kind of overall their, their thingus. Their thingus moringus. And next up, um, I mentioned, I did mention that there were some, there were some interesting connections, some interesting, yeah, I guess connections is the right word, just points of interest to other Nasuverse stuff that are actually tied to the good old Wandering Sea. So, um, first up, um, Cornelius Alba, who's from Karno Kyokai, was actually supposed to be the next director of Sponheim Abbey before he said and did some dumb stuff, like a dummy, and he uh, met with a horrible fate. Uh, but yeah, so he was kind of connected to that bridging area between the two of them. It's interesting. Um, and maybe even in other timelines he succeeded to that position, who knows. Um, and also, um, Nero Chaos is from the Wandering Sea originally, um, this goes so. This goes all the way back to Tsukihime. Um, I'm not gonna delve too deep into that guy, but he's a big deal Tsukihime guy, and I believe even as far back as Tsukihime, he was said to be from the Wandering Sea. So he has a lot of weird knowledge and weird powers and stuff, and other stuff he's done, um, which may or may not be directly related to their style of magecrafting. 
but are definitely kind of a... It kind of shows that the Wandering Sea definitely, in some levels, collects weirdos and oddballs. Now, Sion, or Shion, still don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, um, is actually from Atlas. Um, why she's at the Wandering Sea will become clear later. That's a future That's a future us problem. But um, she's visiting the Wandering Sea for reasons that we'll talk about later. And I think she kind of vaguely outlines some of her stuff in her messages. But anyway, that's a future character we will meet more later. And uh, all of that, kids, is basically all we know. Even with direct on-screen appearances in FGO and some major characters being tied to them, details are limited. They have a lot of interesting themes. They have a lot of interesting touchstones. They have been referenced by the background a lot, but we've never really seen a character who is actively from there or actively working with them that has described all their details and such, so far, at least. Because, um, obviously, in case you can't tell, the next Lost Belt will be, you know, Chin. That'll be in a different place. So it, we, we're going to leave there. We're not going to do a whole story arc there. We're going to leave and go someplace else. Um, we'll see if there's some, maybe some more follow-up data, which we'll talk about probably in our Lost Belt 3 thoughts and however that bridging happens, right? Where we decide we need to leave the place and go somewhere else. Um, but that's that's kind of all we got. Um, there's no, like, case files of the Wandering Sea, or, as far as I know, I don't think Weaver gets involved with the Wandering Sea in case file stuff, so he's mostly just Clock Tower stuff. So we don't have any, like, deep understanding of their inner workings and hierarchy and what they actually study. Just, yeah, the, the Wandering Sea are those weird guys who hide in a wandering mountain range and and only talk about age of god stuff and they don't talk to us anymore that's their thing that's their hat i think i did that in all in about 15 minutes solid it was only it was only two pages but people asked for it and i summarized what we got there it is Ta da! i'm gonna scratch my head and then uh yeah i think that's that's the stuffs like he's super pleased he was able to get us that much and needle ass in there as possible yeah it's a good thumbnail it's good it's 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 kind of funny because you've got needle at one end and then you've got uh because obviously anybody watching or listening to this will be able to see the thumbnail now. Mm. Um, you've got uh, Prison Warden Maeve in the center, and then the final ascension for Nobu, which is funny because it's her wearing her, you know, oversized Buster sweater <laughs> or T-shirt. And look, it was actually looking. It's like, uh, actually, I don't think I used any of these last year. Surprisingly enough. Yeah, um, you might not have. You definitely didn't use this combo. Oh uh, no, because um, I was looking at it. Summer three was out at the same time. And JG. oh yeah, you probably skipped ahead then. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. So Summer Three is going to be interesting. But I think there's probably going to be some reusing of assets. Yeah, we'll that's see. that's fair. We can reuse a few. We can reuse a few assets. I think the primary thing is that, especially with the little like I added little banner images or other stuff. Um, so long as those are different, and maybe we don't use the exact same three every time, it's probably okay to use similar stuff to catch the eye. We just don't want to be lazy about it, right? Or yeah. do we? Uh, or do oh we? shit, that's right. Our fucking shop resets in like five minutes. Yeah, it minutes. does. It's almost eight. Um, do I have enough mana prisms? I probably do. I bought all the ones at the store. God, I don't have a lot of mana prisms, though. Um, luckily, there'll be some more in this upcoming event. Uh, yeah, so I think that's the show. Hope you guys had fun. Did mailbag, did some news, did some speculation, did some Teach Omega Sensei stuff. So, for the next month, I'll just go ahead and cover that, our three Teach Omega Sensei subjects will be what is Magecraft slash Thaumaturgy, what are Phantasmal Species, and what is a homunculus, because people keep asking that question. So, um, five and up patrons can vote. Um, if you are considering becoming a, well, this will go live to public. So if you're considering becoming a patron or bumping your level, do actually wait until after the month. Um, but you probably don't have to worry about it, but it, just it, Patreon is set up to, to do an initial charge. So you can't do like a couple of people did in our early days and, uh, sc- sc- scum out of, of it. Like, you know, at the start of the month, say you'll pay us $20 and then don't at the end of the month. Um, so, uh, be careful about when you upgrade or when you add a pledge, because they will, t- the way Patreon is set up, they will totally, and they probably warn you, but they'll totally be like, oh, hey, you signed up, like, two days ago, we're gonna charge you again. So, uh, watch out for that. But yeah, um, if you wanna, if you wanna join in the poll, five and up patrons, silver tier can get it. Um, and, well, well, it is a new month, so in general, patron plug, we're very satisfied with our patronage, though we did drop a little below $500 again. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are, uh, still, uh, committed to expanding on that front, and patrons can get um one dollar a month, can get audio uploads of everything the moment they're done, and our whole backlog of those. It's a nice feature, um, super fun. And uh, at higher levels, you can vote in polls, get early access to videos, um, watch the show live, get shoutouts, all that kind of fun stuff, and it's really cool. And you should check it out. Oh uh, yeah, we did that at the top, Tyrannic King. It's uh, seashells, needles, and bones. 
because uh, that was two hours ago, I will reiterate the new monthly materials are seashells, needles, and uh, poison needles and bones. Hey, mm-hmm. there you go. You got Boom. a twofer. Ta-da! Uh, yee. So, um, yeah, that's the show. Um, you got any other final thoughts you want to hit up, Lucky? Uh, no. Let's see here. I'm talking about anniversary coming up on the 10th, and they're still doing, I think they're still in the middle of the Oku Labyrinth rerun. So, yeah. JP probably doesn't have anything Check much going to happen. Ends. Next week, we'll definitely have our initial thoughts going on about Summer 3. With, so, you know, OQ r- ends on the 5th. So we might see some of that stuff like the strengthening quest start. Yeah, up we'll, prob- we'll probably get the strengthening quest at that point. We uh, next next week. Um, well, actually, it's a good point since you're bringing it up. Um, next week we'll be recording on the set Friday the seventh, so that'll be a little <laughs> before anniversary time. Um, but that will be let's like FGO two hundred. Yes. Let me check my notes. I'm. Uh, we mentioned this last week. I think we're we're ac- we're juggling two milestones. Um, no, it'll be one fifty. That's right, one fifty. Oh, this yeah. is one forty nine. Um. So this the next one will be 150. Uh, that's a big milestone. It'll also be about our two years. Uh, we've all been doing it for two years about then. So we're going to have a big, big, big public episode. Probably. I tried to come up with other adjectives, but we didn't. Um, so, yeah, uh, tune into that next week. We'll do a, the episode will be broadcast live to public, a feature we usually do for our patrons. But we'll do a big celebration. We'll talk about some stuff. And uh, keep on keeping on and maybe give you some other news about stuff. See how we're doing with summer. All that goodness. So tune in. Um, mm-hmm. The reason why I'm slightly confused is because I said the other milestone we got coming up is that um, two weeks from now, that What's Up will be What's Up 100, and also be after two years of What's Up. So, it's a whole thing. Um, that means Omega has to juggle lots of numbers, which he is bad at. Math! Take a sip of my water. Uh, Yeah, so next week we will definitely have more stuff, but not quite the full stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, do tune in on the 7th for Big Show. Big Show time. Uh, yeah, and I think that's everything, because that's what's going to be next week. Sorry. AC just kicked it. I had to shake it off a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, tomorrow on What's Up, we definitely will be talking about many things. Like, you will have Ghost of Shishima thoughts. I'll talk to Omega probably about some more Gen, uh, Gen Sakai things. Uh, what else? Do you have anything else particularly? In the Arknights? Office? People ask us about Arknights, and there's a new Arknights oh, yes. thing. Uh, we, yes, we do have Arknight things. Uh, but other than that, like, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. find some stuff, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. We always do. So yeah, do tune in to What's Up coming later this weekend. If it's not like five hours, that might take a couple of days to edit. We're we're wacky and wild with What's Up now. Um, But yeah, I think that's the show. So's probably time to do the outro. Hmm. Right, time to do the outro. Hey, if you are watching this episode on YouTube and you like it, be sure to give it a like. If you have any comments, leave in the comment section down below. Or you can visit on my Discord. That link is in the description and on our channel page, as always. Uh, the description is actually full of lots of helpful links. But also, if you're new here and haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. You can do that right below on the subscribe button, or you can hit the thing in the end card I always put in, except when I don't, but I usually put it in. And that'll let you sub to the channel if you haven't already to keep all our latest videos, like future What's Up and all that stuff, more Let's Suck FGOs, Wanteds, the whole works. And also, even if you're already subscribed, considering that bell for notification so you always know when we post a new video or when we stream. Um, you never know. Omega might find out in the middle of the afternoon that they released the summer PV and be like, well, fuck, I guess I should release that wanted now. I guess it's coming out. Surprise. So notifications are helpful. And of course, we mentioned this earlier at the front of the show, consider becoming a patron for all those out- stuff we outlined later, and it keeps us alive. Although we are doing not not quite as bonkers as the previous month, but we did pretty good in, in ad rev on, in July, too. Mm. Getting those sweet, Lovely. sweet views, that sweet engagement. You continue watching more content, you can support us that way too. So, yes. we will see you next week for more Let's Suck FGO, and like I said, later this weekend for more What's Up. That is the show today. Oh yeah, Lost done some research in Last Origin. We can maybe chat to him about that off mic and get some stuff. Mm. Okay, that's the show. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.